With so many meal kit services out there, it's hard to find the right one for you. Here's what sets Home Chef apart. Home Chef offers delicious meals anyone can cook. They'll recommend meals based on dietary preferences such as calorie conscious or vegetarian. They even offer microwave and oven ready options that save you time and effort in the kitchen. Your box arrives weekly with recipe cards and perfectly portioned ingredients. For a limited time only, go to homechef.com slash art19 for $90 off your first month. That's a value of 10 free meals at homechef.com slash art19. Hey, what's happening? I'm Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. It is, uh, it's Friday, uh, but not the Friday it's supposed to come out. It's supposed to come out on Thursday, uh, but not like yesterday, Thursday, more like last week, Thursday. And uh, the, well, there's a glitch in the matrix. We're behind. Look, I'm not going to lie to you guys. We're behind. Why would I lie to you this early in the show? Why would I ever lie to you? <laughs> what, is it, what does that even mean? I'm not going to lie to you guys. We're behind. You know I'm behind. I, I, you're waiting. You're looking patiently at your iPods going, what the fuck, Mike? And uh, and we missed a week, and I don't like it. I hate it. Uh, I'm furious at myself, and that just leads uh, leads me into a shame spiral, and then I'm angry at myself. And uh, oh, you don't want to hear all of that stuff, right? But you're all very nice, and I'm sorry, and I apologize, and uh, I will work extremely, extremely hard to make sure it doesn't happen again. And some people are very kind. They're like, oh man, don't worry about it. And I worry about it incessantly. You're very nice not to hold it against me. Uh, and I do apologize. And now I will stop apologizing because I, I don't know if this is like a fucking, nobody wants to hear a guy apologizing all the goddamn time. <laughs> if this is, what do you want? Just like a cuck podcast where I just come out and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And you guys beat the shit out of me. Is that, uh, uh, do cucks get beaten? I'm not even sure if they do. I'm not sure if cucks get beaten. I know, I know they watch their girls blow guys. I know that's their, their big thing is that I know cucks watch their girls take somebody else's pipe. That's fun. Uh, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it. And it's all over the place. Every time you go to any sort of the fucking yank sites, you're like, uh, uh, hey, what's this? Oh, you know, somebody's stuck in a doggy door or somebody's watching their husband. Uh, I'm sorry, their husband is watching a wife uh, blow six guys and have a blow bang in a, in a hotel room. And I, I don't get it. I don't I don't understand it. I guess. Look, I've been in relationships. OK. And, uh, and and there was never at one point ever in a relationship that I ever think to myself, you know, what would make this relationship great? Another cock. Oh, my God. Let's go ahead and open up the door. That would make this thing really sing. You and I are really getting along well, aren't we? And uh, and the only thing I can think of to queer the deal on this is if we brought in a second cock that I got to watch you work on. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, you know, you and I are very intimate and enjoying our fucking lovemaking sessions, if I may say something as uh, creepy as that on this podcast. But yet, uh, I just I don't think they're they're good enough. I think I need to see you get fucking roughly worked by a stranger. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Who has that in them? And look. I'm not a kink shamer. If you're a cuck person and you're listening to this podcast, good for you. Enjoy it. If you like watching your wife peel the skin back and go to work and 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 throw it a guy, I I'm all for it. Good, good for you. If, if you if you like uh, uh, seeing your wife take a take a load in the face, oh okay, that's good. You know, and even saying it sounds weird. And I and I don't mean again. I'm not kink shaming. I I if this is what you like, because look, there's things I like that I don't know if people like. Uh, I'm not going to go into them here on this podcast. Maybe I will. Maybe I run down a list. Hold on. Let me get a scroll out. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, I, I don't know even know how we got into that. But the, the point, well, you know, let me just make sure again. I have to clearly state this. If you're a cuck, good for you. I don't care. Also, call me. Uh, if you want to watch your wife blow somebody, call me up because the pandemic has fucking worn me out, man. I have been uh, I am sitting here for a year staring at a blue wall and a green wall thinking to myself, man, what if there was somebody here watching me have their wife blow me? And then let's you know, let's fucking do it. Let's do it. Do you live close? Do you live far? At this point, I'm willing to hop on a goddamn plane. <laughs> Who the fuck knows, man? Uh, anyway, I'm not kink shaming you. If you're a cuck person, good for you. If you if you and your wife have a bull, a regular bull, or you've got a, a stable of bulls, I don't know how it's addressed. You learn a lot reading Pornhub. 
and Spank Bang and XXN or XNXX or whatever the fuck it is. Um, and Home Movies Tube and Red Tube and, and every other goddamn site and XTube and, ah, oh, Christ. Uh, and motherless.com. All right. <laughs> this is me telling you where to go, telling you the things to look at and enjoy yourself. Now, I will tell you what, uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, all of those sites, uh, they had, they have a, uh, there's a real issue with those sites uh, with the past year because they cracked down on people just posting clips. Now, all the clips now are from like verified users, which, you know what? Fuck that, man. I look, I just want to see shady porn. I don't want to see some very, I don't need three forms of ID to watch you fuck your girlfriend. All right. I don't need that. I, if you're, if, if it's a, a verified user, good for you. And I don't know if they're all making money. Who fucking knows? But it takes some of the zing out of it, man. You know what? I, I like, uh, hey, man, you know what? I filmed a couple fucking in the alley when I was standing on the roof. You know what I mean? You're like, all right, well, that's that's a decent clip. I can go ahead and throw off a batch to that. I can five knuckle shuffle to that. I, I can fucking run, run my fucking hand up and down and see what happens. Uh, I can make a mess over that, but no, instead now it's like, uh, you know, it's always these verified users and check marks. What the fuck? What are you, Twitter? Jesus Christ. Just, we want to see people fuck. I don't need to know their names. I don't need to know that they have a deed to a house. That's fucking ridiculous. I just want to see people get banged. And, and it's, it's, so it's either that or it's porn companies. And that's why when somebody gets stuck in a dog door, it's always, you're like, oh, that's fake. And now look, I'm not saying I'm a guy who wants to watch somebody get stuck in a dog door and get fucked by their stepson. But I'm saying if it was real, maybe you give it a look. Maybe I give it a, a, the once over. Maybe if it's I've been from a company, you know, that's not a stepson. You know, that's not a real mom or nobody's aunt is trapped in the dishwasher and getting railed from behind by whoever happens in. Uh, no, no. See, give me the old days. Give me the there's another uh, thing of porn that I found myself <laughs> uh, perusing, certainly. Um, and again, this gets into the cuck thing because I don't get this at all. But it's the uh, it's the women who. uh <laughs> who answer the door naked when a, when an Amazon guy comes or a pizza guy and, uh, and then they, they pay them and they do, and they just, that, that's the whole, they, it's called a challenge of some sort. I don't know if it started on TikTok. That's where most of your challenges start. Uh, but if you go to these porn sites, it'll always be like, ah, a pizza driver challenge, nude wife. And, uh, and then you're, you're, it's a, it's a woman and she like kind of makes a face into the camera and then she takes off her robe and she answers the door completely naked, lets the pizza guy into the house and, and, and poor Ramon has no idea what to do with his hands. He's handing over the pizza and seconds ago here, seconds ago, he was doing his job. He was just bringing a pizza to the masses. He was just going ahead and making sure that people were fed. And now the man walks in and he's confused. He's got a wedding ring on, but also his brain is spinning because you see this really hot naked chick and she's walking up with money in her hand, which usually that's that's reversed. Uh, and he's just like, I don't know. Do, and, and then he's thinking, well, look, do I offer her the pizza for head? I mean, do I do that? Because, I mean, look, if I'm delivering a pizza and if I'm not married, it's the first of all, it's another thing. I got to be I got to be out of relationship, not married, not dating anybody in order to get blown for a pizza. I'll cover the fucking 18 bucks. Happy to do it. Um, but there's always chicanery involved. And I, I, I never know. Who's this for? Like, are you trying to lure the wife into being molested by Ramon and then you can sue fucking Papa John? I mean, I don't know, man. Who gets off on this? Do they watch it back and go, oh, remember when you tricked Ramon into staring at your nipples? Well, you didn't really trick him. You answered the door with your nipples out. I mean, look, I got news for you. If you got your nipples out, I'm going to stare at him. I don't give a fuck if it's at your house, the mail uh, post office or a cigar store. I'm going to fucking look at you. Don't ask me why I'm in the cigar store. Don't ask me why your nipples are out at the cigar store either. It's a, it's don't think it's not like I thought about that for any length of time. That's what just came flying out of my mind. I don't want you to think I have some fantasy about looking at nipples in a cigar store. Although now that I think about it, really all depends on the nipples. I mean, uh, uh, you know, and lady nipples and look, lady nipples, I'm going to look at anywhere. Cigar store, paint store. I don't give a fuck here. Mix this up. Mix this white with this red and make me a fucking oyster shell pink. I'm going to stare at this chick's nipples. I mean, that's fine, right? Nothing wrong with that. I'm a red blooded American male. Uh, and as I've mentioned to you, I'm not kink shaming anybody. You want to stare at somebody's nipples in the paint store, the cigar store, wherever the fuck good for you. As long as they're into it, there has to be consent. There has to be consent. You can't just go leering at people's nipples like Terry Thomas in a fucking British comedy. Don't do that bullshit. You got to go up and you, well, you don't have to go up and ask them. That's even stupider. <laughs> Excuse me, madam. Uh, might I mention that your areolas are exquisite and the nipples are like a cherry on top. Can I just stare at them, please? I'd love to stare at them. Can I Can I please have your consent to ogle you right here in the old Home Depot? Let me ask you this. Can I hire six Mexicans from outside to come in and, and follow you around and also ogle you as well? Uh, they're so lonely out there and I have no cabinets for them to move. I don't have a hutch for them to grab. Uh, 
Uh, if only they could come in here and help me stare at your nipples. I don't know what helping means. What would that mean? Would I, if I if I hire six guys to look at your nipples with me, it's not like I have the intensity of seven pairs of eyes upon you. You certainly do, but I'm still only. I've only got my peepers working. I can't. There's no fucking he man. I have the power. Let's all hold hands and stare at those nipples, and I'll get six times the intensity with you fucking guys hanging out. That's not happening at all. I'm still staring. I just happen to involve six guys in the equation, and at that point, now again, that's your kink, buddy. If you're if you're staring at nipples at Home Depot, that's one thing. But if you're hiring a bunch of immigrants to stare at goddamn nipples with you, well, then I got news for you. That is that is I'm going to put that on the the, uh, the kink. That's on the kink list. And again, I don't kink shame as long as you're consenting. If uh, if this woman named Linda is walking around and she goes, you know what? I don't mind if you and six of these guys you've hired from the parking lot stare at my nipples. Then you're fine. Follow her around, stare at her nipples, get your paint, then you leave. But I got you got to pay those guys. You can't just go, oh, guys, the nipples are your payment. You can't be that jag off. Excuse me, fellow. When they could look, you can go, hey, senor, how about a little something for the effort? I don't know who those guys are. I don't know why you hired Baba Louie from the Quick Draw McGraw cartoon, but apparently you did. Oh, that quick straw. He cracks me up. He look at the nipples in the Home Depot. Uh, I don't know why you hired the Cisco kid and Pancho. Oh, Cisco. Oh, Pancho. You see those nipples, Cisco? Oh, ho, ho, ho. So they're brown as a golden sunset. Uh, you can't just hire those guys to, to walk around with you without giving them some cash. Don't pretend like the nipples are there. Because you're going to go outside. They're going to be like, uh, excuse me, senor. How much for how much for the nipple time? And you're going to go, oh, fellas, come on. You saw those nipples. That's Linda's nipples, man. That's That's payment enough. And these guys are going to beat you to death with a tire iron, and you're going to deserve it. If you hire anybody to stare at nipples with you, pay them handsomely. Don't pretend the nipples are doing the heavy lifting there, because they're not your nipples. You can't, by proxy, say that Linda's nipples are the reward for hiring these guys to come in and stare at nipples, because you asked them to come in and stare at nipples, and you said you would pay them for the fucking uh, the courtesy of doing such a thing, to help you out with a nipple stare. Uh, and then you get up to the parking lot, and you're like, oh, fellas, those nipples were hot, right? Take those images with you the next time you have to go build somebody's deck. And you're, they're going to go, well, uh, why don't you pay us? And you're going to go, I can't pay you guys. Uh, the nipples were payment enough. And then you try to sashay off to your Volvo. And again, as I've mentioned, they will beat you to death with a tire iron. And you will fucking deserve it. You will deserve it. And, you know, I'll, here's what I'm going to say right now. If you hire six Mexican guys to come into the fucking Home Depot and stare at Linda's nipples with you, and you try to pull that bullshit, the nipples were the reward in themselves and they don't have to get paid. And then I'm going to show up. I will pay them to beat you to death with a tire iron. That's that's just how it works. Uh, I will go over the top. I will go all in over you. You will you will just limp in. You'll limp in with whatever you're going to have there. And you go, hey, guys, the nipples are their own reward. And I'm going to go, and they're going to go, senor, we don't want that. And I'm going to show up and go, fellas, here's some greenbacks. I'm going to make it rain all over those dudes. And I'm going to go tire iron time. And they're going to pummel you into the ground right there in the asphalt. And the, the parking lot will run red with your fucking plasma. Pay the men. Pay the men you asked to stare at nipples. You ever see that movie, The Men Who Stare at Goats? Used to be The Men Who Stare at Nipples, but they couldn't afford it. You can. Uh, I don't even know. How do we spin off into that stuff? Well, the bottom line is, folks, we're here now. We we should have uh, been here recently or before, but now we're here <laughs> doing whatever. Just don't. I'm not kink shaming. If you want to stare at people, you want to do all that sort of stuff. And as I mentioned, oh, I'll tell you this to get this. I mentioned those sites and, and you're probably right now. You're not even listening to me anymore. You've gone to type in those sites. You're looking at all the hubs and the bangs and the whatever the fuck and the tubes. There's hubs and tubes and all sorts of stuff out there for you to go ahead and peruse. Uh, but I will tell you this. This is a drag. Get this. Uh, I, and I hate to tell you this, but but why not? What am I going to tell you? I, you know, I have a laptop here that I'm recording on, courtesy of our good friend, listener, Michael Waldbilling, a fantastic gentleman who uh, brings this show to you every week. He is, he is responsible for this uh, because my other laptop was a little older. And it had, it had it was at an advanced age, and he he beat the rush. He got me this one, knowing the other one would go tits up eventually. Well, I'll tell you this: that laptop has not gone bad. But what that laptop has done is it has aged out. So I can't update Google. I can't update a bunch of apps that are on the fucking thing. So it's like, uh, you know, it still works. It still goes to the internet and stuff. But it'll say stuff like, uh, you know, you if you could update to iOS fucking Ranger. I don't even know what the fuck Mac is using these days. They keep naming their fucking things like Bat Masterson. What the fuck, man? Do you want operating system Bat Masterson in your computer? I don't fucking know. I, I Do I? You tell me. Why are you naming shit after cowboys all the goddamn time? 
Here we go. It's Cheyenne version two. I, well, all right. So is dust going to come out of my speakers? I'll tell you what. I might have dust in my laptop because you know what? This is, and I'm, I'm going to say this and it fucking pisses me off. My fucking H doesn't work. Seriously, my H does not work on my keyboard. I have to hit it super hard for the H to come out. And our great friend, uh, Jeremy, who is the co-CEO uh, with Emerald Alawadi LLC, our friend Ahmad and Jeremy are the co-CEOs. Um, Jeremy sent me like some spray and and some keyboard juice or screen juice, but I don't know how to use it and I'm terrified. Like, I don't know. I don't want to put it on the screen and all of a sudden I hear and the screen melts and I'm like, what the fuck, man? And Jeremy's like, no, you weren't supposed to put it directly on the screen. Like I'm supposed to buy four special chamois. I don't fucking know. Uh, by, the, by the way, have you ever seen this four sh- the four special chamois concert that's on YouTube? Oh my God, it's terrific. You should check out the four special chamois. Um, I'm annoyed right now. I'm not going to lie to you. I have a, I got a nose thing happening right now and I don't even fucking know how to figure it. I, I don't want to stop because Jesus Christ, it's been two fucking weeks, right? So it's like, I, I finally have some momentum. We're doing a goddamn show. I've already scrapped this fucking thing like six other times, but now we're in, now we're locked in. I can't lose all of this cut gold, <laughs> all that other bullshit, but it's like, I want to do a sniffle, but I don't want you guys to hear the sniffle. I wish I could drop the sound at some point, but also if I have to stop, eh, you don't give a fuck about any of this stuff. It's already been bad enough. I apologize nine times. Um, no, I'm sorry. There was kind of a sniffle, but it's not getting it done. Hold on. All right, let's take some water. There you go. Look at us. This is what we're doing. Bodily functions, folks. We're, inv- we're imbibing in liquid. We're doing some sniffling, doing everything we can to bring you the best possible show that we, uh, that we have in the pipeline. Uh, <laughs> I'm distracted. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I don't understand my head. Why is it doing this? I finally have momentum. I'm rampaging. I'm talking. I'm doing I'm not rampaging. I'm talking, though. We're doing a show. Isn't that great? I keep wanting to, you know, it's because I got to knock back a fucking, it's, it's, uh, it's just annoying. It's, you know what it is? It's like, uh, you never get post nasal drip and you got it right in the back of your throat and you can feel it there and you're like, oh man, you know what? And, and you could, uh, you could make an uncle noise and knock it back. Like I could knock back a clam right now and just fucking, and then I'd be fine. But, uh, I mean, I can't do that on the air with you guys. Nobody wants to hear me do that. Nobody, do you? What have you did? No, of course you don't. Uh, what the fuck was I talking about? All right. So we were painting. We killed somebody with a tire iron. Uh, there was blood everywhere. Uh, there were cucks. Oh, I was talking about Spank Bang and the Triple X and all those other fucking networks. So I mentioned these things to you, and I have this old laptop. And so now, uh, one of the laptops is the one I hear I'm recording on. It's fantastic. The older laptop is in the bedroom. It's on a desk. And uh, it's it's involved in much more nefarious activities. Like this this particular laptop here is the one I write on. I write comedy on, if I ever wrote comedy. Uh, I check my emails on this. This machine is clean. This machine is so clean. This machine is uh, virginal, I guess you'd say. Now, occasionally it has looked at some naked people, but not a lot because I try to keep this machine absolutely fucking spotless inside and out. But the other machine, forget about it. The other machine looks like one of those fucking network news, goddamn local broadcast exposés with the black light. I, I can't even tell you what's on that laptop. It's grim. Don't even, don't even. If you see that laptop in my room, don't touch it. Uh, although if you've already gotten into my bedroom, odds are that you're going to look like the laptop eventually. <laughs> there really, there really is no reason to be in my bedroom unless you're planning on looking like that laptop in the black light. Um, so... I, I have that laptop in there for activities, for other purposes. That's, you know, that's your spank bang laptop. That's your that's your red tube, your X tube, all of those, right? Pornhub. But here's the problem: uh, as this the laptop is now aged out, uh, it it won't look up sites. I mean, it'll find the site, but it won't play the clips. So. I'll be sitting there and I'll look for some clips and I'll peruse them and I'll go, oh, I like the title of that clip and I'll open it up and I just put it in, I'll open up a new tab and put that in there <laughs> and I'll have like five tabs open. I don't watch them all at once. That would be psychotic if I was just like, what would the now? Now I'm just Malcolm McDowell at the end of a clockwork orange and I'm just fucking <laughs> with porn. <laughs> Got my eyes pried open. I'm just fucking spanking watching five clips at once. No, it's not that fucking involved. But what I'm saying is you'll, you'll open five or six tabs and then you'll go to, for, you know, from each tab to each tab thinking, hmm, this looks interesting or hmm, this might work. And, uh, and then you decide uh, who's the lucky one that gets the prize, if you know what I'm saying. So, uh, so I'm looking through and just recently, it's a recent phenomenon. These, uh, these sites don't play porn anymore on, that, on my laptop in the bedroom because they, 
I don't know if Google's outdated. Now, here's the thing, though, because Google, I can use an incognito window. Do I have a VPN? Look, that's none of your fucking business. But I do have the uh, have the Google incognito window where it's like, you've gone incognito. Here's my favorite thing. It says, you've gone incognito. And then it says, by the way, your work, your friends, your family, everybody knows what you're doing right now. Uh, this doesn't mean that nobody can follow you. In fact, everyone can still trace you. But we've just decided to call it incognito because it gives you a small sliver of hope that people don't know you're a pervert. Uh, <laughs> so I, I laugh whenever I see it, but I still use it. I still use the incognito window because here's why. Here's another reason why. The incognito window will not keep track of your history. So whatever you're browsing on the incognito window, because if, if by chance some workman comes in, he's painting my bedroom, why would he be? I don't know. And then he goes, you know what? I'm going to quickly check my email while this guy's in the shower. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why the fuck am I in the shower when there's a guy in my bedroom checking his email? Hold on. I said he was a workman. This sounds like, I'm not going to lie to you, this sounds like a clip you would find on Spank Bang or XTube. That's it. Absolutely. Just some guy showering and there's a workman in his bedroom and he comes walking in a towel and he goes, whoa, what are you doing on my computer? And the guy's like, well, I, I noticed that you like stepdaughters get caught in the fucking dog door. And I'm like, well, maybe. And then you hear the fucking music start and there's a towel on the floor and what the fuck? Uh, that sounded like what that description was. All right, so look, there's no workman who's ever going to use my computer in the bedroom. As I've mentioned, if you're in the bedroom, there's a, there's a good chance you're going to wind up sticky. So that's that. So no workman is coming into my goddamn bedroom. I don't need any repairs. None of that shit needs to happen. Uh, but if... On the off chance, somebody, if I had that computer out here, if I brought it out in the living room, because I decided, you know what, I want to jerk off in the sunshine, maybe I do that. And then I bring it out in the living room, uh, and then somebody comes in, and he's there, he's there, oh, you're just getting some stuff done. Now somebody's doing some business, and I go to check the mail, whatever the fuck. And uh, or I say, it's my cleaning lady. You know what, she goes in my bedroom, and she doesn't get sticky. But if she's in there, and she's cleaning stuff, and then she goes into the laptop, she's like, oh, I must check my email. And then she's like, what the hell? And like, she's confronted by like 19 spank bang windows. That would be fucking terrible, right? Uh, the incognito window doesn't fucking keep track. Now, because now, the regular window, that's what I'm saying. She would go to check her email. She would open the browser. And then, uh, and then she would go to put in the space bar, like or type in the whatever the fuck. And if she, even if there was just some link, like she'd type, uh, maybe she's got her email at, uh, she's like, you know, sister Mary Rosa at hotmail.com. And she just types an S and then automatically fills in spank bang. And she's like, what is this? I cannot clean this house anymore. I don't want to touch this desk. And then she runs off. And then I don't have anybody fucking helping me out. That would be a total drag. So I still use the incognito window, even though it is the, the only thing it does is it doesn't keep the history. I think it might still keep the history. I don't fucking know. Again, as I've mentioned, when I die and people's going to are going to come in here and they're going to dump over my laptop and a bunch of cocks are just going to come tumbling out under the desk because of my browser history and every other goddamn thing. Um, so I, but it's, it's, uh, it's becoming a real deterrent to my, uh, uh, stroke game, if you will, uh, individual stroke game, not stroke game with a partner. But uh, because, I, you know, the clips I want to watch are gone or, or they don't play like I can see the splash screen. Now, I'll tell you what, you know, it still plays the ad for jerk mate that still fucking plays. God damn it. I'm just trying to watch some goddamn porn and out of nowhere. Literally a guy with a megaphone on a megaphone hands it to a woman and she goes, did you ever hear of jerk mate? And she screams it into my earbuds. And I'm like, what the fuck? It is so fucking loud. It's it's it's. It's got to be five times louder than the clip itself. It is so fucking ridiculous, and uh, and so that that plays that plays fine. The jerk mate or the or the the ad for <laughs> and this, this ad makes me laugh. There's some product that uh, that increases your load. I guess I'm just not even gonna, I'm not even going to fucking be del- delicate about it. They're just like, hey man, do you want to increase the size of your load? And, and like, there's guys who are like, yeah. I, I guess so. What I, because look, man, I don't, I don't know who that's for. Is it for you when you're alone? So you can go look at me. I hit myself on the chin because I've hit myself on the chin before. It's overrated. Uh, or is that for like uh, your lady friend when you pull out and you're like, ha ha, and you just fire hose her, which if you watch a lot of porn, you think is a good thing. And you think ladies are like, wee. And look, uh, I'm going to say this and I'm not going to get too into it. I have dated people or been in a position where I've been in a bedroom with somebody who was into that sort of thing. Perhaps a couple of people I've been with who have been like, yeah, that's something they like. So I guess maybe the ad to increase your load makes complete sense. But the uh, but the way that they but it all depends. 
depends on your partner. And also, if you're with your partner, you know that that's what she likes. And, you, and then you're, the ad isn't going to do anything for you where you're like, uh, there's nobody, nobody's like, oh, man, my girlfriend wants me to have a much bigger load. Bing, bing, bing. And then they fucking add and then comes. That's, you know what? That's the ad to do. You should just have a guy be like, oh, man, my girlfriend wants me to have a, my wife really wants me to have a much bigger load. And then, uh, and then the guy goes, has this happened to you? And then he can give you a fucking speech. But their commercial is like, it's actually kind of disgusting because it shows, uh, I think, because the, all right, look, I'm not even joking. I think this is the name of the product. Uh, Semen X. S-E-M-E-N-X, I think. I'm, I could be wrong. But uh, but in the in the commercial, they're like, like before Semen X, and it's like an eyedropper, and they're like after Semen X, and it's, it is a paint gun. I mean, it's like, you know, like, it's fucking ridiculous. It's, and it's, and it's this thick, viscous fucking thing they pour all over a desk. It makes the, and there's a banjo playing. I mean, it is a fucking, and, and you know what? You're sitting there with your cock in your hand. You're just like, can we just get through the 15 seconds of semen X? I don't, I don't want a bigger load. I'm not clicking this ever in a billion fucking years, but you have to watch the ad. That's, that's the price you got to pay for watching the free clips at the porn bang or whatever the fuck. And that's fine. I look, I'll watch your stupid ad, but here's the thing. Then when you start fucking taking clips off and, and telling me that I can't watch certain things, or if you want to make just verified fucking users being the fucking, then I don't want to watch your ad. Now you're controlling it on both ends. You can't control that there's only verified users and also show me ads, you fucking dicks. Uh, and they're always trying to get you to join too. Like who the fuck joins Pornhub? Who the fuck? I mean, there's there's a million porn sites out there. Now look, uh, granted, uh, as I've mentioned on my computer, they don't work anymore. There's no that I, I, that's that was what I was getting to. That's the bottom line. Is I'm trying to surf and and find these sites. So. Uh, I, I wind up, there's like a couple, all right, like <laughs> like home movies tube, use, it works occasionally. That's supposed to be, and that's supposed to be all amateurs, but then it's not. You know what I mean? It's always like, it's supposed to be amateurs, but then someone's wearing a, a fucking nurse costume. And you're like, all right, hold on a second. This isn't really fucking amateurs or not. Um, and look, I don't mind your pros. I don't mind that. But I mean, there's something, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Philip Baker Hall in, in Boogie Nights. Like, this is real fuck action to the max, Jack. These are the real people. This is the future stars of porno. And it's like, yeah, that's what you want to see. You want to see somebody blowing somebody in an alley. You want to see somebody bend over a car trunk. That's what you're looking for. Fuck all this bullshit where you're like, oh, you know, and, and then the in whatever I, <laughs> I don't, I've said far too much about this porn and whatever my preferences might be. Anyway, the point is uh, the, the, these videos are quitting on my computer. I don't know what to watch. I, well, I mean, I know what to watch, but I look and there's only certain sites that work now. And, uh, and I look, they're still working. They're fine. Cause I can make anything work. I, I can, you know, fuck. I used to jerk off to the fucking, uh, to, to catalogs when I was a kid for fuck's sake. I used to, and not even like the Victoria's secret catalog. I mean, I, I jerked off to the Sears catalog. I, I jerked off to, to people in Sansa belt slacks. I can make it work is what I'm saying to you. Uh, I can grab a handful of myself and, and hit the finish line no matter what. And I look, here's the real thing too. I can close my eyes and do it myself. I've had enough sex in my life to where I can actually go, you know what? And, uh, and I can think about the other times that that's happened for me and go ahead and go, it wasn't that a delightful time. (laughs) It's like, you ever think about a delicious sandwich you had at a picnic? You're like, oh man, that was such a great sandwich. And then you think about the picnic, you're like, that was totally fun. And then you're like, why did that picnic feed everybody else? See, that's what makes you mad. Then you're like, why did that fucking picnic feed everybody else? And then you're like, well, I don't know if the picnic really fed anybody else, but the picnic certainly invited people to the table. It might not have given them any food, but it certainly entertained them and had them hang out at the picnic for far too fucking long. And they shouldn't have goddamn been there when it was my fucking picnic, my fucking lunch, my fucking food. There's no reason to go ahead and have all of these other people attend the fucking picnic and sit at the table and, and you entertain them with your picnic nonsense. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, uh, but that's the deal. I don't, I don't, uh, uh, whatever. I'm worried about the clips not working. So I, I do have a memory and I do have these things where I can think back and go, oh man, remember that time when that happened and wasn't that great? Cause it was. Uh, and we all have those, right? But then also now I'm 53 and that's all fading. Like you're like, oh Jesus Christ. Uh, you're thinking about the time you got laid when you're like 26. You're like, ah, oh, that was awesome, wasn't it? And you're like, wait a minute, uh, do I have to go that far back? I gotta, I gotta clip, I gotta split my life in half to jerk off. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, but why not? You know what? Why can't you do it? Bring your memories. If you go online and you can't see these fucking uh, 
young people, old people, I don't give a fuck. It really doesn't matter to me anymore. I just, I'm just going to bang my cock into the desk and finish up quick because I got, I got stuff to do. I got a life to live for God's sake. I can't be, I, I can't believe I've devolved into talking to you guys about it for a fucking hour. Jesus. All right. But seriously, if you want to watch your wife blow somebody, give me a call. Uh, <laughs> is there money in it? I don't even know. Does the guy get paid? Uh, and I look, I don't need to get paid. I just as long, look, it's it's worth it to me to look into your wife's eyes and realize that we're doing something wrong and you're fully on board with it to see to see <laughs> to stare deeply into her eyes and see that she appreciates my strength while at the same time resenting your weakness. No, that's not true. Come on. You guys are into that lifestyle. It's fantastic. Everybody's happy and their thruples and their nonsense. Uh, <laughs> all right. But again, seriously, if you want to watch your wife blow somebody, call me. Um, or even better, if you want to see somebody go down on your wife, give me a shout. Oh, if you want to see both of those things happen, that'd be perfect. You know what? I'm not doing anything. I'm in my goddamn apartment waiting for the phone to ring. You know, I don't answer the phone. I'm going to be honest with you. I never answer the phone. However, if that call's coming through, well, I'll tell you what, that's that's somebody I want to have a conversation with. How are you doing? Oh, well, I would be more than happy to have your wife's thighs pressed against my ears. Let's do this, shall we? And then what? You'd like to see me grab a handful of her hair? I can do that as well. All right. Uh, pandemic's getting to me. It's it's because uh, we're freeing ourselves. We're getting we're turning ourselves loose. We're heading out into the world. Sort of. Uh, as you know, my good friend Ahmad was here. Yes, was. I put, I put him on a plane Tuesday. Uh, well, let me just tell you about that. As a matter of fact, uh, Ahmad flew home Tuesday. And uh, he'd been here for about three weeks. And I actually thought he was going to be here for a month. But he, he he was planning on being here for two weeks. Said he might stay three, but he might stay four. And I was, look, man, I was, I just wanted him here. Hang out. Fucking cool. Have a running buddy to fucking go do, do stuff with. Uh, and he was in a hotel, so he didn't have to worry about what I was doing in the bedroom. I, uh, <laughs> I, I so that was fun. It was great to have him here. And then, so Tuesday is his, is his scheduled trip home. And, uh, and so I've got to drink and I got to take him to the airport and we dudes, we went all over the place. We did so many different things. We, we, uh, we went to games, we ate, we, uh, we went to movies, we ate, we watched movies at the house and we ate, we watched wrestling and we ate and we watched sumo wrestling and we ate, uh, good Christ. And we, and he helped me with some streaming stuff. And then we fucking ate. I mean, we ate like you have no fucking clue. Like you, you think, uh, look, <laughs> I can do that shit on my own. All right. I, I'm I'm a I'm a terrible person who has spent a year and a half absolutely turning myself back into a goddamn slug. And I'm ready to climb out of that uh, that sewer. But we'll talk about that next week. But uh, but while Ahmad was here, because as I mentioned before, Ahmad came to town saying, you know what? Seafood and tacos, man. Let's see how it works out. I said, great. I'm in. I, I never need an excuse to go fucking get on a horse and go get some goddamn food. But the thing is, here's the deal. Ahmad is like me. All right. Now, uh, when I'm alone, I, I, again, I eat one meal a day. Now, do I also eat chips and chocolate and garbage? Yes. That's the thing that's fucked me up for the past year and a half, but also eating fast food and Chinese food and, and other things. Uh, you know, I only eat things with CH. <laughs> I only eat things that start with CH Chinese food, chocolate, chips chalk uh ravioli stuffed with chalk oh what a delight um so i you know i i can do damage to myself but then a mod comes to town and and he wants to go eat stuff and i'm all for it so then we wind up in the morning we would go eat lunch like i said we only ate once a day or i i, I said i only eat once a day and he says he only eats once a day but then what we would do is we would go uh, eat in the afternoon and we would eat a big lunch and then it would be in my fridge later because we couldn't finish this big lunch. This is the thing. We might only eat once a day, but we ordered a fuck ton of food, like a goddamn I, dudes I, like Ahmad and Ahmad is skinny. I told you last week he's fucking skinny as hell, but it didn't matter. I, we went to so many different restaurants and we had so many different things and so much good food and we would go every day. I would pick him up at his hotel at noon, we would go to lunch or one o'clock. We'd go to lunch and we'd eat. And then I'd come home and I'd stream. And then there'd be stuff in my fridge to eat later. And I'd eat that. And then I'd have chips and chocolate and every other thing. And, and then he'd bust my balls about eating chocolate and garbage. And I'm like, dude, you just, we just went and ate fucking four hot links. Like what the fuck? But again, he's skinny. So he's impervious to any sort of heckling in that area. I mean, he's thin. He's fine. He doesn't have to worry about that kind of thing. His heart's working great. I think mine's skipping a beat every now and then. I think my, my ticker might be a little off, but, uh, 
that's my own fault, so I have to fix it. But I, but here's the thing: we would buy all this food, we would go to these restaurants, order this chow, and uh, look. Even though I might like to go out, I can't eat like I used to eat. But my brain, I still, as we've known, this has been something I've struggled with the entire time, my entire life, but also this entire show. Um, I still have the head of a fat guy. So, and look, and look, now I got the body to fucking match. Unfortunately, in the old days, everything had gone down and everything was fine, but now I'm back on the climb and, oh, Jesus, fuck. And not, and not on a climb. That's probably not even a good thing. A climb, that sounds like cardio. That sounds like me doing actually the right thing, but I, I am not. I am clearly not. So, uh, so we would go to restaurants and then we'd have stuff in my fridge and, uh, and, and, Again, we would order so much food. We, all right, I mean, here's one example. We went to a, a restaurant called, uh, it's by my house, called Blue Jam Cafe. B-L-U, I think, Jam Cafe. And it's a breakfast joint, man. And so we wanted to have some breakfast. We went over there, and uh, there was a huge, it's very popular, so there's like an iPad, and you got to put your name in, and then there's a list, and you're sitting out on the street. And everything's weird now with restaurants anyway. You wear a mask, but you know the whole time you're waiting, you wear a mask, and you sit down. But magically... <laughs> when they bring you water, you can take your mask off. It's, it's, I would argue with the science all goddamn day. I I don't think it's right. I don't think it's, it's, I always ask the waiter or waitress. I always go, Hey, look, are you cool with me taking my mask off? They're like, Oh yeah, go ahead. Nobody's ever told me no just yet, but then I will all follow up and I will say, Hey, look, hold on. We're fighting off a yawn. I, uh, I'll say, look, it, it's okay. You tell me if, if you're, if you don't want it, I'll wear it. And, and then I was like, no, man, of course, it's cool. I'm vaccinated. I'm like, so am I, and we're fine. But still, I have to wear a mask when I walk up to the, the hostess and when I sign up and when I'm waiting and when I sit at the table. But the second they bring you water or food, anything to eat or drink, you can take the mask off and you don't have to put it back on. And as I've mentioned before, I, I, I'm not Carl fucking Sagan. I don't know, but that just doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem like I'm safe. It's it's not like, you know, eating toast provides a barrier from the germ. If it did, I'd eat toast all fucking year and I would have been fine. Um, it just seems strange. So they're, they're, everybody's weird. Everybody's still. And look, there's some people who don't fucking care. I Look, I got to be honest. I don't fucking care. It's weird. And I always choke at the waiter. But if I didn't have to wear the fucking mask anymore, I wouldn't wear it at all. I know. I know. I have friends who are saying that they're going to wear it all the time anyway now. Um, yeah. Uh, good luck. Because I don't think I'm going to be a guy who fucking wears it. If I don't have to wear it, if they say, hey, man, you don't have to wear that anymore. Guess what? I, I burn it like uh, the, like somebody on my favorite team betrayed us and I had to burn his jersey. I don't give a fuck. It's happening. Uh, so we go to Blue Jam Cafe and we sit down. Oh, but I should tell you this. We're, we're, we're meandering outside. We put our name in the list. And uh, I turn around and I see somebody and I'm like, I know. I, I knew exactly who it was right when I saw them. Uh, and, uh, once I saw this person, I was like, wait a minute, uh, this person should have another person with them. And that's the person I really want to see. So here's who I saw. I turn around and I see, uh, like blue sweatpants and a white t-shirt and a shock of blonde hair, striking blonde hair. And this person is probably like six, five. And, uh, I recognized it. There was only one person that could be. And of course it was machine gun Kelly, the rapper slash actor. Uh, known for me for his role of Tommy Lee in the dirt movie on Netflix, where he stole the fucking show by playing Tommy Lee perfectly. Like he acted just like him. He looked and sounded like it was amazing, amazing casting. And he pulled it off in an incredible way. And by the way, here's, here's something else. Did you know they're making another Tommy Lee movie? I just, I just saw this and this makes no sense to me. It's it's they're making a movie about Tommy Lee with Pam Anderson, and I don't know if it's going to be like a tragic love story or I I don't know. And I think it's the guy who made American Horror Story Hotels or whatever the fuck. Who knows? But it's uh, but but Sebastian Stan. Do you know who that is? That's the uh, the Winter Soldier, I guess. I, I would, for lack of a better term, Bucky from the uh, Marvel shows. The Winter Soldier. You know who the fuck he is? He's in Falcon Winter Soldier. He's Tommy Lee. And uh, and the girl from Baby Driver, the the waitress chick, the 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 lead, the girl Baby Driver fell in love with. She's Pam Anderson. And if you go online and you look, there are photos of them in their makeup. And holy fuck, do they look like Tommy Lee and Pam Anderson? It's ridiculous. Now, certain angles they don't, but the ones that they chose to put out, like the kind of the still photos, the publicity photos, Jesus Christ! I don't know. They look amazing. They look amazing. I don't know what the fucking movie's about though. I mean, he. 
I know he they had a bunch of sex, they took a bunch of videos, and then a kid drowned in his pool. Like, I mean, is that is that what we're looking at? Is that what we're looking for, I, I guess? I, I just didn't think that Motley Recruit would require... I, look, one movie, I get it, I guess, because I read The Dirt, and they said they're going to make a movie about it. I'm like, that seems weird, but go ahead. But a second Tommy Lee movie? Is, is the world clamoring for this? Is this the story that hasn't been told? What the fuck? Uh, but good for them. So Sebastian Stan and uh, Baby Driver Girl are now in the new Tommy Lee movie, but they will never top. That's right. I'm combining them into an unholy Voltron of Linus. And I'm saying that. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. I can, should that be the name of the show? Let me write that down. The un, an, an unholy Voltron of Linus. Hold on. I think that's the name. I think that's the name. How do I spell Linus? I don't even fucking know. Uh, <laughs> so I'm combining them. There's no way they can handle Machine Gun Kelly's title because he fucking he nailed it. He crushed it out of the park. So anyway, I'm not very excited to see Machine Gun Kelly at breakfast. I'm not going to lie to you. He's not uh, he's not my cup of breakfast tea. He's not my cup of chai latte. I don't care. And, and also it's L.A., man. So you see those people all the time. But I'm with a mod. So part of me is like, oh, man, a famous dude. He'll see him, and he knows what Machine Gun Kelly is. But then also this, get this. In my brain, I go, wait a minute. Machine Gun Kelly, yeah, uh, not remarkable. However, Machine Gun Kelly is, uh, he's dating Megan Fox. And they are uh, nothing if not all over one another all the time. In fact, just days before seeing uh, him there at the breakfast house, I saw pictures of them at the iHeart Music Awards show, and they were backstage, and uh, and she's got photos where she's just grabbing his dick and smiling and sticking her tongue out at the camera, and you're like, well, Megan Fox, and look, she's into that sort of thing. She did it with Brian Austin Green. I don't know if she's really into that sort of thing. I just know that there's paparazzi photos of her holding dicks, all right, so good for her, but I knew in my brain, I go, Machine Gun Kelly is banging Megan Fox, so she can't be too far from, from him because that's the whole thing. They're joined at the hip, and uh, sure enough, he kind of moved over, and she was behind him, and I didn't notice her, and she looked like... Uh, she was wearing a bra under a jacket. That's what she was wearing. And she looked almost like a, and she had a lot of makeup on her face, uh, but she was still goddamn Megan Fox. And she was still strikingly fucking hot. And Ahmad will argue with me. He didn't think that she was, but I, I don't, uh, to me, I, to me, she was, I was excited to see Megan Fox. She had that kind of, Hey, look at me. I'm hot tractor beam happening, but also those crazy eyes. She looked a little different, but, uh, her and machine gun Kelly were there for breakfast and it looked like they were about to have a good time and a, and a wonderful dish whatever the fuck they were going to have at the Blue Jam Cafe. Uh, they dealt with the iPod. Then they walked away, or the iPad, and then they walked away. And then we were seated for breakfast, and then they showed back up, and then they wound up getting a table. And uh, they sat behind me, and Ahmad is like, oh, man. I said, what? He goes, he just he brought a chair around the table, and they're sitting together. It's weird. And, I look, I used to do that, too, when I was dating. Uh, I would sit next to the person I was dating. Because I was fucking whipped. Also, I liked it. I like touching people. Um, but I would I would actually sit next to someone at the table instead of sitting across from them because I enjoyed that. I liked being able to put my hands on them, hold them, whatever the fuck. And I, you know, I'm not against PDA, certainly. Uh, I'm just glad that there's no dog doors at restaurants. Anyway, um, so I didn't, mind, I didn't look back because also that would be gauche and weird because I'm sure they were getting stared at anyway. So I'm like, well, fuck this. All right. If they're whatever weirdness they're doing, he can see it and that's fine. Uh, so anyway, this whole thing was about what the fuck we were ordering. Who cares that Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox were there? Well, you care. That's why I brought it up. So we go to order our food and, uh, he looks like, he's like, oh man, you know, chilaquiles sound good. I go, great. I go, there's something I get every time I come here. It's called like Hector's special or whatever. And, uh, man, it's, it's breakfast pasta. I think I've talked about it on the show before. It's if you were to make fried rice, but instead of using rice, you used elbow macaroni. That's what it is. It's just egg and cheese and onion and bacon and noodles. And it, it is a fucking home run. It is so delicious. And they have a bunch of other good food on their menu. But every time I go there, I have to get this fucking breakfast pasta because it's like, fuck, where else are you going to get breakfast pasta, right? Noodles and cheese and shit. It's fucking amazing. So, uh, I look at the menu and I know what I'm getting. And Ahmad is looking. He says chilaquiles. Uh, and then they had a, uh, a breakfast brunch burger as well. And Ahmad is like, oh, that sounds good. I go, well, get it. And he goes, yeah, but I don't know. I want these chilaquiles too. I go, why don't we split the chilaquiles? And then you, you get the breakfast brunch burger and I'll get my breakfast pasta. He goes, well, wait a minute. You have to get Eggs Benedict. 
Now, uh, you're wondering why the fuck do I have to get eggs Benedict? Well, it's because I've never had eggs Benedict in my life. I, I've never had hollandaise sauce. I just don't, uh, you know me. Look, when I get breakfast, here's what I like. I like uh, over easy eggs. I like crispy hash browns. I like crispy bacon. And oftentimes I'll crumble the bacon over the hash browns and then put the eggs on top and chop it up into an unholy mess. I'll do that because it's super delicious. The yolk gets everywhere. It is really good. Uh, and so that's, I usually just get a basic breakfast. So I've never been one to get a fucking breakfast sauce. You know what I mean? If you got breakfast, breakfast is good enough. I don't need a breakfast sauce and hollandaise. I don't know. There, I've always in my brain, I know that it breaks or it's thin or it's like mayo. I don't even fucking know. It was just one of those things where I'm like, nah, no thanks. And he's, so he found out I didn't have eggs Benedict when he first got here. And he's like, well, you're, you're getting it. You have to get it. I'm like, well, I, but I've never had it. I'll, I'll get it at some point. And he goes, well, no, you have to get it. If we go to breakfast. So then we went to breakfast. I'm going to get my pasta. He's like, you got to get eggs Benedict. I'm like, fuck, dude, this pasta is amazing. And uh, I said, all right, well, then if I get the eggs Benedict, then then we'll get the chilaquiles and split that. And uh, and you're going to get the breakfast brunch burger. And, and at that point, we're already getting three entrees. <laughs> Which sounds really stupid when I say it out loud, but we we already are getting three entrees. So, uh, so God damn it, what's a fourth? What does a fourth do for you? And so, uh, so we get we had to order it on the phone, and we ordered chilaquiles, and we ordered a breakfast brunch burger, and I ordered breakfast pasta, and I ordered eggs Benedict uh, with fried potatoes, and then. They bring this food out. They they stare at us like we're fucking from space. Because no human being could ever consume this much food, especially a thin man and a large man. I mean, it, it looked it looked like we were in some sort of contest. Uh, but they brought it out, and uh, and I tried eggs Benedict for the first time in my life. And I will say this: uh, first of all, it's it's delicious because it's just ham and eggs and and a and a muffin, and and the hollandaise sauce is just kind of a I, like I tasted it. I was like, well, this is okay. And he goes, what do you think? And I go, go, well, this is very good. I go, but it's like, it seems to me if you're going to put a breakfast sauce on something, you should smother it in the breakfast sauce. And he goes, oh, yeah, you're you, they definitely skimped completely on the hollandaise. I go, should I get another side of it? He goes, well, no, you're almost you know, you're biting into it. So don't worry about it. He goes, but next time we go somewhere, if you're going to get it, you've, you've got to get like the real hollandaise. He goes, because that is absolutely they totally stiffed you. And I said, OK, so I ate uh, I wound up eating the eggs Benedict. And uh, I had a couple of pieces of chilaquiles. He had his breakfast brunch burger. Uh, and then I ate some fried potatoes. But then I wound up taking, I took literally the entire container of breakfast pasta home. This, the, I, I, I didn't even eat one bite of it. And then I, I put my fried potatoes in with it as well. So then I got noodles and potatoes and cheese and what? And doesn't that sound great? I, it's just, you just, you don't you just want to stick your dick in the box? You do, don't you? He ate the breakfast brunch burger. He brought home his chilaquiles. So that so that goes right into my fridge. And so now, imagine a week of that. And now imagine two weeks of that. And yes, now imagine three weeks of that. And and then he, uh, you know, I, I go to take him to the airport on Tuesday. He's going home. And I have, I've got a fucking UN in my fridge. I, I literally, it's it's because all the different places we ate. This this is true. This is a list of the things that are in my fridge right now. And he's fucking gone, man. This dude's in fucking Kuwait. Here's what I have in my fridge right now. I uh, I have, uh, well, actually, all right, well, one of these is gone. Well, the breakfast pasta is gone. I ate the breakfast pasta. But it, it, all right, at some point, it, let's just do this. In my fridge, uh, I've had these. This is what was in my fridge over the past two weeks. And oftentimes, all of these were together. At one point, I had all of these in the fridge at the same time. I had a breakfast pasta with noodles and cheese and bacon with some fried potatoes. I had Roscoe's chicken and waffles. I had the eggs uh, that I got from Roscoe's. Look at this little eggs with cheese and green onion uh, and some potatoes and gravy, which is which is amazing. Uh, we had chilaquiles in the fridge. I had udon from a restaurant down in uh, in downtown and uh, not just any udon i know you're thinking to yourself well mike what kind of udon just a uh, regular uh, no 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 friends uh i got carbonara udon which had to have at least a stick of butter in it noodles butter bacon egg i mean it, it, it was crazy delicious uh so i have uh, that's udon that's chilaquiles i had ramen in the fridge that's still in there we had sushi in the fridge. I had an Italian sub from a deli in the fridge. 
barbecue ribs, brisket, potato salad, macaroni and cheese, baked beans, and a hot link are in my fridge right now. Chicken from Zanku and a Lula kebab from Zanku. And, and to top, look, that's Japan. That's fucking Mexico. That's soul food. That's just breakfast. That's fucking Italian food. It's American barbecue. It's it's Middle Eastern food. And now you're thinking to yourself, well, Mike, there's no way you could ever top that. You got Zanku, you got ribs, you got fucking hot link, you got a kebab, you got sub, sushi, ramen, udon, chilaquiles, Roscoe's, fucking breakfast pasta. What could you else eat? Well, you know, you know you're, here's what I had. Uh, we went to a restaurant in West Hollywood called Rosaline. And, uh, and I had, I, I have this, I still have in the fridge. Um, uh, seafood paella is in my fridge right now. <laughs> now, I mean, I had sushi in there for like three days and he's like, you're not going to eat that leftover sushi area. I'm like, of course I am. It's in the fridge. And he's like, oh my God, you're going to die. And I'm like, I'm of heart of your constitution than you, my friend. And I ate the sushi. Although one of the sushis I had to throw away because it went bad quick. Like the rice was crunchy. I was like, fuck that. Uh, but the paella, I don't even know what that's going to be like. That's got, that had fucking scallops and shrimp and a, and a fucking, uh, and who, who's the little guys? Calamari, those guys. They're in there too. And I haven't eaten it yet. Uh, I'll, I'll get around to it. But first, I've got to finish the barbecue ribs and the hot link in my kebab and my Italian sub. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, this dude went home and I'm like, do you want to take any of this food with you? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm, I go on the plane, whatever. And he's like, fuck, no, of course not. So, uh, man, it's just, it's just, we ran... We ran ourselves crazy. We went and ate all over the fucking place. We went off, We went to, get this, all right, first we went to a soccer game. Uh, I went and saw the LAFC. Dudes, I'm into soccer. I'm a soccer guy now. Now, you know me. You know I love the fucking World Cup. I even have a Vuvuzela in my fucking, uh, in my uh, closet right now. I'm excited for soccer. And so we were talking soccer, and he has a favorite team in uh, Italy. Uh, Inter is their name, Inter Milan. And so I was like, all right, is there any team? Because I don't want to like the Premier League because that just seems boring. And then there's La Liga, which I don't know enough about. But then I know there's the Italian League, and he's got a team in the Italian League. I go, is there anybody in the Italian League that has, like, green kits? He goes, oh, you know what? There is. He goes, there's a team called uh, uh, Sassuolo. And I'm like, what? And he goes, no, Sassuolo. And I was like, oh, Sassuolo. Uh, He didn't say it wrong. I did, but I'm blaming him for it right now. Uh, so I look up Sassuolo dudes right now. I'm going to, you know, you got to Google Sassuolo. If you Google Sassuolo and you look at their kits, look at the green, look at the green. God damn it. They look fucking incredible. And so that is my, uh, Italian soccer team. I'm going to follow them. I'm going to follow Serie A. Uh, they've got a guy named Raspadi and a guy named Bonatoli. I'm making these names up, but they are on the team. Um, but we went to a soccer game here in town. We went to the LAFC, which is the Los Angeles football club. And, uh, you know, Los Angeles is opening up again with the science, with the, Hey man, wear your mask until you sit down and have a beer and then you can take your mask off. It's like, all right, whatever. Uh, but we went to the LAFC soccer game and it was at, uh, at this new stadium down near the Coliseum and dudes, I got to admit, man, it was, it was so great to go out. It was so great to be in the world. You know, I, I don't. I, I keep saying that I'm. I don't want to do it, but then when I do it, I really, really love it, and I want to do it more and more. We went down there, and we're pulling into the LA, the, the, the stadium, and they just they had just mowed the grass, so the whole area smelled like grass, and it was alive. There were people kicking soccer balls, uh, vendors selling jerseys, people just hanging out. Uh, they had a whole vaccination station as well. If you wanted to do that, they'd take your temperature, but. Uh, but it was so gorgeous. And this is on the outside. We haven't even parked yet. I just I just loved the whole vibe of being outside and with people there. It was it was it was glorious. It was fucking glorious. And I can't wait until it's normal again. And so we went and parked and we go to go into LAFC and we bought tickets in the vaccinated side. Uh that's that's another thing. I think we're gonna open up here next week, but most of the time now they've got a vaccinated side and an unvaccinated side. So we went into the vaccinated side. And uh we got there a little early. And the team was on the on the field, and they had their uh, you know it was Pride Month or Pride Day, so they had their kits on that were rainbow colored. It was nice, and we went and take a lap. We wanted to see the stadium. I've never been there, and the cool thing is the LAFC their colors are black and gold, and the and the whole stadium on the inside is black and gold. There's like gold railings and black plaques with gold paint, and it just it's it's a fucking cool ass atmosphere. So we walked along the concourse, 
and we wanted to go to a place. There's a barbecue place called Blood Sows because we were going to stop and eat before the game. And then I said, well, Google it and see what the kind of food they have at the stadium. And he looked and there was Blood Sows barbecue and like a fucking chicken house. I'm like, dude, let's go to that barbecue drinks. I've wanted to, I've wanted to try Blood Sows forever. It's, it's, uh, it was a guy who used to cook on it in his yard. And then all of a sudden he got a brick and mortar because a lot of chefs respected him. And now he's fucking kicking ass at his own barbecue joint. So, uh, they said it was there and we said, well, fuck that. Let's eat that buddy. So we, uh, we went walking down the concourse and we're, we're, you know, taking a lap. People are wearing masks. People are drinking beers. They're having fun. It was just, it's just alive, the vibe. And we saw blood sows and we're walking, but there's a bicycle rack, uh, just about in front of it. We're about five steps in front of blood sows. There's a bicycle, you know, a, like a bicycle rack that you'd park your bike in. And we go walking up and there's two security guards and we go to walk past the guy goes, whoa, 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 where are you going? I said, we're just going to get some barbecue. And he goes, you can't. You're on the vaccinated side. I said, well, yeah, but I mean, we're just getting barbecue. It's right there. He goes, no, man, if you bought vaccinated tickets, you got to stay on the vaccinated side. And the and the weird thing is they weren't really selling tickets on the non-vaccinated side because Ahmad had asked me what we should do. And I said, well, dude, let's just fucking get room because, I mean, let, let's get the non-vaccinated side. So we can sprawl the fuck out and not have to worry about sitting around anybody. And he's like, yeah, it's a good idea. And then they wouldn't sell him the non-vaccinated side. That was only for season ticket holders. So. I, which I don't even know if that just meant not. I, I don't look. I couldn't figure it out because they're like, I'm like, so does that mean that season ticket holders aren't vaccinated or is it just a germ town? What the fuck? But sure enough, we walk over and the and the barbecue house is on the non vaccinated side. And there and there's nobody on that fucking side, man. Our side is, you know, it's it's probably two thirds full. And over on the non vaccinated side, you can see there's like four people sitting in the fucking stands. And I'm like, why is Blood Cells even open then if four fucking people are here? Are you going to sell one wing to somebody? What the fuck? And, uh, and I, you know, I didn't care, whatever. But at the same time, it just seems stupid. I said, look, we're five steps away. He's like, ah, nah. If you're vaccinated, you got to stay on the vaccinated side. And I'm like, again, the science is not proven here. The science of, because, uh, because again, if somebody's on the non vaccinated side, they could walk over to the bicycle rack and they could take their mask off. If they're drinking a beer, so they're not vaccinated, but they're drinking a beer and then their mask is off. But then I'm standing here and I'm, I'm within proximity of them. If somebody sneezes, we're all dead. It's it's, it's going to be contagion. If, if a monkey drips blood on the floor, everybody's fucking going down. So don't tell me I can't have a goddamn hot link. What the fuck is your problem? Uh, but I'm not going to fight anybody over it. You know what I mean? It's just, I'm, I'm tired of brawling with people for these dumb decisions. And also we're so in the home stretch of this goddamn thing. It just doesn't, it, and like none of it adds up. I don't understand it, but I'll follow the science, but come on, man. It's five steps away. It's barbecue. And I, I almost wanted to go, I would have offered a fucking non-vaccinated dude. Hey, man, I'll give you 10 bucks if you'll go get us some barbecue and bring it over here. But then the odds were the guy would buy the barbecue and he would sprint off into the distance and I would never be able to catch him because they wouldn't let me go after him. Oh, that's what I need. Some fucking over hyperactive minx on the other side who just fucking takes my money and splits. That could have happened. That's why I didn't offer it to anybody. Um, and then we walked back to our seats and we passed like there was a taco, a Trejo's tacos, Danny Trejo's tacos and a chicken place. Those were on our side. Those are those are food for vaccinated people. And I said to him, I go, hey, man, you want to have some uh, you want to get some some tacos? He's like, no. I was like, all right. What about the chicken? He goes, no. He goes, you know what? Honestly, he goes after this bullshit with the fucking uh, barbecue. I don't want to give these guys any more of my money. And uh I have never felt more of a kinship with the mod than I had in that moment right there because you know me, I'm the same way. Like I, if you don't want my fucking money, I won't give it to you. I won't give you any of it. That's I mean, we've had st- I've told you you go it's like when you go to a restaurant and they close at 10 and it's 9:40 and they're like all right, yeah, you know it's going to be 10 minutes till we can see you. Like they get all shitty with you and it's like, "Well, fuck you. If you don't want my money, I'll fucking bail." And so that's what a mod said. He's like, "I don't want to give these people any money." And I said, "All right, fine, whatever." Uh, I wasn't that impatient. I was just like, I totally understand. I'm in. Let's do it. So we went and we sat back at our seats. And uh, guys, I got to look, man. I, I don't know if you're soccer fans or you're not soccer fans because Amada's seen soccer all over the world. And clearly, you know, the La Liga and the Serie A, the Italian, the German, the Bundesliga, which I love saying, oh my God, the Bundesliga. All of these things are certainly better than American soccer. But it didn't matter because the vibe was so great in the uh in the end zone behind the goal there was this one section 
that was just filled with super fans who were singing and chanting the entire game. They never took a break. There were guys with drums and then a bunch of people with flags waving them. They have chants and songs, and they did it all game. You know, the, the, the way soccer works, there's two halves, and each of them are 45 minutes. And these fucking guys were... They're doing this and fucking going crazy, and they got flags with crows on them and, like, and the Raiders and black and gold everywhere. It was just, it was just fucking gorgeous. And I was like, this is, this vibe is so fun. Like I would, I would get season tickets for that. Cause then part of me is like, man, do I have to have become a fan of LAFC? Like I'm going to have to follow this team now for fuck's sake. Cause they're close by what the hell. Uh, but then I saw ticket prices and I was like, nope, unless I can watch them on TV, but it's not the same as the vibe of being there. Uh, they wound up playing the New York, whatever the fuck. Oh, and it was New York. It was the NYFC. Because it was the LAFC and the NYFC, and the uh, but I was just excited to see the black and gold uniforms because that you know Ahmad bought a hoodie outside the stadium. They looked fucking amazing. So we're sitting there, and like I said, they wore their pride kits during warm up, and then they come out for the game. And the New York Football Club has like blue kits with orange lettering, and they looked fucking gorgeous. It was very much uh, like the Mets. You know what I mean? They had the Mets colors, and then LAFC comes out, and and they're not wearing black or gold. They're wearing like this weird blue, like it, it made no sense. I'm like, both Ahmad and I were incredibly disappointed because like, wait, where are their colors? Because also in the stands, everybody is wearing the black and gold. Everybody in the fucking end zone with the chants and the flags and the drums, they're wearing black and gold. And then these dudes come walking out and they look like janitors. It was a team of fucking janitors are taking these guys out. I'm like, oh, come on, man. I'm here for the black and gold. But uh I guess it's an alternate kit. We tried to Google it. I couldn't figure it out. What the fuck do I know? You know what I mean? At that point, I'm like, all right, no barbecue and fucking weird uniforms, but it was still a fucking great time. Uh, and and LAFC was dominating New York, but they couldn't put the, the ball in the net. And I know you're like, well, that's what soccer does. You never get to score. Shut up, man. Soccer's fucking fun. And uh, and then finally, there was a set play and a little kickback and then, the, and then fucking... Guy banged in a left hand, a uh, left footed shot, not a left hand. That'd be a penalty. A left footed shot. He cranks it in, and the place goes crazy. This huge explosion. Because here's another thing too. Everybody's like, "Well, it's nothing happens in soccer, and you know, it's one nothing, big deal." Well, here's the deal though. Uh, if only one point is going to be scored all game, people go out of their fucking minds when that point is scored. So then they scored to make it one to nothing. The place exploded, right? And I stand up, and we're going crazy. And there's like a song, and the guys are chanting, and. Uh, all of a sudden, like these these uh, sprinklers turned on us and there was mist. And so I put my hands in the air and I just let this mist fall down on me. It was great. And uh, I'm looking up in the sky and the mist is falling on my head and on my on my hair. And uh, and I hear someone go, no, what, what? And they kind of start yelling. And I'm like, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm covering myself in mist. I've got my hands in the air. It's fucking awesome. Basking in the sound and the glorious cool mist in the hot weather. And then I go... And I realized this mist smells a lot like beer. And uh, I look at a mod and he looks at me and he's like, I can't believe that just happened. And I and there were people behind us with kids. And I look at them and uh, the guy goes, oh, man, he goes, why do fucking people do that? And I, I realized that what happened was when the team scored someone behind us because we were under the overhang so it wasn't somebody in the upper deck but it was somebody in the seats behind us just uh they just shook up their beers it was a few of them and they started spraying them all in the air and all over everybody and and i don't know if it's just that people have forgotten to behave in the bat during the pandemic or how to behave in public i, I don't know but you they soaked the crowd it, it wasn't just one dude it was it was like three dudes behind these the, the last row and they shook their beers up and they sprayed the whole section and it ended i mean ahmad's new the hoodie smelled like booze i i smelled completely like booze it was all in my hair and on my face but i here's the best part though again like i said i'm basking in it i, I close my eyes and i tip my head back like ah yeah the mist because i thought it was like this cooling mist that happened when they scored a goal i don't know change your name to the la mist that's a fucking cool ass name uh, but instead no i got a beer shower from these fucking idiots and and didn't even realize it for about five seconds and then i smelled it and i'm like wait a minute this smells like beer and then I saw these guys with their kids going, oh, God damn it. They were grumbling. 
And I looked at the dude. I go, dude, I thought that was like a sprinkler misting us. He goes, oh, no, no. He goes, it's just assholes back here shaking up their beers and spraying everybody. Uh, I go, does that happen? Like every goal? Is that a thing? And he goes, no, it never it never does. He goes, oh, if you're over there and he points where the bands and the drums are. He goes, he goes, that section, yes. Then you're definitely going to get beer showers. He goes, but here it's not supposed to happen because, uh, you know, we've, we paid a pretty good amount of money for our tickets, which we thought was the, hey, man, don't throw fucking beer on a section. But it turns out it wasn't. We were covered in it. Uh, and then we watched the rest of the game. L.A. scored, and then uh, and then New York scored, and then L.A. scored again. I, I believe the... No, I apologize. L.A. scored, and then New York scored, and then L.A. couldn't score, and then uh, New York scored at the end to win the game. I, out of nowhere. It was... Uh, L.A. was dominating the entire game, and then New York, even with a red card, New York wound up winning. Short-handed, they still banged in a header in like the 88th minute, and uh, New York defeated L.A., and I, and I, as you know, honestly, like I told you, I was like, maybe I should support these guys. And then after the beer shower and then they lost to New York I was, and they didn't wear their black and gold. I'm like, oh, man, I'm out on these guys. The fans are great. But uh, but they, it was too many minuses for me. Now, will I become an L.A. Galaxy guy? No. Will I become a Chicago whatever the fuck? No. Uh, but I'll start watching more soccer, certainly in the in the in Major League Soccer. But more importantly, I'm going to start watching more world soccer. Like I told you, Serie A and also the Euros start this week. And I think I'm probably going to root for Italy. Why? Because two, uh, three guys from Sassuolo are on that team. Oh, my God. I've got, like, uh, Bigateri. He's on that team. And Rastamacholi. He's on the fucking team. I can't wait. Uh, but, yeah, it was it was fun. We wound, up, we wound up going to the fucking soccer game. And it was worth it because it just felt to, good to be alive. It felt great to go out. We went all over the place, man. We went a couple of Dodger games. I get the, all right, so we go to a Dodger game, right? Same thing. We bought vaccinated tickets. And he asked me, should we get vaccinated, non-vaccinated? I go, look, I don't, whatever. Whatever keeps us, gives us room. And also, I'm a fucking giant at this point. He would just get me in the building. So we went to the Dodger game. We went to the vaccinated site. So I want to, I foolishly parked over in left field and we had to enter into right field. So we walked around the stadium. You know, and because it, and you had to do it. Sometimes you can just slip into an ent- entryway, but we we were vaccinated, so there are designated gates or gate if you're vaccinated. So uh, and they make a big deal out of it on the website. You got to bring your vaccination card. You got to show proof of that. You got to and well, the whole deal, right? So, but I don't care. Better safe than sorry. I would rather you did that than just go. Hey, man, it's Lord of the Flies. Everybody fucking come in here and pass the conch. I mean, whatever the fuck. So, uh, so we walk all the way around and, uh, walking is a fun thing for me these days. God damn. I got to fix it. We'll talk more about it next week, but I come around the corner and we get to the vaccinated gate and there's some dudes out there and, uh, you know, I kind of pause, I get out my vaccination card and uh, Ahmad's got his in his hand. And as we walk up to the guy at the table, he kind of, he looks at us and, uh, he goes, okay, guys, give me your wrist. And we go to hold out our vaccination cards. He goes, okay, yeah, no, fine. Give me your wrist. Give me your wrist. And he put wristbands on us and he sent us on our way. He didn't, he, uh, he didn't, he didn't even look at the card. Like we had them in our hand and I think he saw that we had them in our hand, but, but he didn't, he didn't even look at him, touch him, glance at all. He just wanted to get us out of his fucking line. And this is why I tell you the science, man, I don't fucking I believe in the science, but also the weirdness of the fucking people being told they can take their masks off if they're vaccinated, and then they're going to check if you're vaccinated, and the guy didn't even look at the fucking card. It was like, come on, man. Are you serious? And uh, and again, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt that he probably saw that we had them in our hands. So for him, that was good enough. But he didn't take them and look and try to compare them with our driver's license or anything like that, and I was ready. I had my license. I was ready to go. And uh, nope, they didn't even fucking look. It was crazy. Um. So two days later, we go to another Dodger game with our buddy Pat. And, uh, you know, Pat's like, oh, my God, I, you know, I forgot my card. But they took a picture of it. And they sent it to me on my phone. And I explained that last time, literally, when we walked up to the guy, we had, our, we had him in our hand. The guy goes, you're good. You're good. And he put, you know, wristbands on us. He goes, don't worry about it. I said, I'm sure they'll look at your phone, whatever they got to do. And uh, we went to enter Dodger Stadium on the vaccinated side. Again, the same exact gate. Different guy, though. And we walked up, and I didn't even take mine out of my wallet this time. And uh, they never fucking asked for it. They just put wristbands on us and told us to head inside. They So this is supposedly the vaccinated side, and you buy tickets. 
that say you're vaccinated. I don't know, but they didn't ask for proof at all either game. Like I said, the first guy may have seen it in my hand. That's when he said you're good. But the second guy, he didn't even fucking ask for him. I mean, there was no check. It was the guy left it in my wallet. I didn't get my license. I didn't do anything. And he didn't ask a fucking thing. And, you know, I've got a mask and I go into the game. You sit there and and you start to wonder, should I take my mask off? Because how many of these people lied and who didn't fucking lie? It's a strange thing, man, because now there's a variant and it turns out the variant might be giving people diabetes. And who the fuck knows? Right. I mean, I don't know anything. I got no fucking idea. Who knows what's real and what isn't anymore? All you can do is the best you can. Uh, but then, yeah, we went to San Diego and, uh, you know, we, we sat up in the upper tank and we went to a Padres game. It was just it was a goddamn blast. I'm, I'm so glad Ahmad was here. We saw movies. We went and saw we saw uh, Quiet Place, which I had never seen. Uh, we watched it. At, and then the next day we went to see Quiet Place 2 in the theater. And there was social. And this theater experience was better than my first one because it was a really clean theater. Everybody was nice. Uh, there were masks everywhere. It was it was a it was a good experience. And seeing a quiet place too in the theater, you know, that's a movie you really should see in a theater. If you haven't seen it, you should. And uh, then you know we watched. Pat came over. We watched Mission Impossible movies. Went to his place. He came to my place. And then I you know I was freaking out over Tom Cruise and his fucking Mission Impossible exploits. And then Ahmad's like, oh, you think that's something? And then he spends an afternoon showing me Jackie Chan clips from like Police Story. We watched Police Story with Jackie Chan. And then he just showed me exclusive fight scenes. And I'm, I mean, I don't even know how Jackie Chan is alive. Just insanity. Insanity. What That dude, everything that he did was fucking unbelievable. And I, again, I thought the Cruise stuff, and I look, I'm, I'm still on board with Cruise, but Jesus Christ, watching the Cruise stuff and then seeing the Jackie Chan stuff, you're just like, well, I obviously Tom Cruise watched every Jackie Chan movie there was and tried to uh, ape it and, and duplicate it in some way. Um uh, but just incredible. I mean, it, just super fun to hang out. And uh, and Ahmad, so, so Tuesday, you know, I have to take him to the airport. And uh, I drive him down there. And he had told me, he's like, well, I checked in with the airline. and Because he had started worrying, not even worrying about it. He had started to, to make the plans for it on Friday night. He was leaving Tuesday. But Friday, he contacted the airline and said, hey, what do I need to fly? And they said, well, you know, you got to check with, or with the with the actual airline uh you gotta check with the airport and he's like why all right but i'm checking with you the airline and whatever he didn't he got the runaround from a few people but he went on the website he checked what the whatever the united states needs for you to get on a plane he had it all squared away so he said uh you know i'm I'm, stick around because you never know what's going to happen here and i go well it's fine and again after having been through the experience at at the dodger game I i don't even think they're asking for cards anywhere anymore who knows so uh, I took him to the airport on Tuesday. I dropped him off to say goodbye and uh, got out, gave him a hug, told him to take care, drove off. And my plan was to kind of lurk around the airport, but I had to get back to the house to start streaming and traffic is, uh, has reached back into peak Los Angeles levels. So it was 55 minutes to get back to my house from the airport. And, uh, and so I had to hustle. So I hopped on the freeway, stop and go. He texted me while I was on the freeway. He goes, hey, man, they're still checking some stuff here. Uh, I'm not on the plane, but right now they're just trying to straighten it out. I said, I just said, fine, keep me posted. And I kept driving to my house and, uh, and it was every second of 55 minutes. And I got off at, uh, the one Oh one and, uh, and then I headed off onto my street. I turned right onto my street and I got to be about a block from my apartment house. And he texted me and he just said, it's a no go. I'm going to need a ride. And my heart sank for him, man, because I, you know, he'd been here three weeks and one more day isn't, isn't anything, but you're, you do that thing where you're like, all right, I'm getting on a plane. You start, you start organizing your life again. All right. I'm going to get this squared away. I'm going to get on the plane. I got to get home. I got to work in two days, but all the, you just start planning your life. You know, normally when he's here, we're, like I said, we're getting up, we're eating fucking breakfast noodles. And then the next thing you know, he's got to get on a plane and head home and go to work, which is fine. So you start to change your mindset a little bit, but for him, texting me you know almost virtually an hour after i dropped him off that means he's been he's been fucking around with these people for an hour as they investigated this and looked at that and wondered about this and checked his ticket i I didn't know all i know is the man needed a ride and 
And I was like, well, all right. And I just texted him. I go, cool, on my way. I said, unfortunately, I assumed they would put you on a plane, so I am at least 50 minutes away. He goes, that's fine, man. I got a ton of phone calls I got to make. So I just did a U-turn, literally did a U-turn and went back to LAX. And uh, I picked him up, and he's like, I have to get a COVID test. And they they had told him, like, the website said he didn't, and then there was another website that said he didn't, but they couldn't confirm it on the airline. It was just, it was kind of in play. And he wasn't sure, but we both assumed that he was going to be fine. Cause he, dude, that guy's been vaccinated since fucking January and he's got a card to prove it. And I just thought that would be enough. And it just turns out that it wasn't. So he needed to get a COVID test. He's like, we got to go to a Walgreens or a CVS. And that was 155 bucks. He goes, well, actually, you know what? There's one here at the airport. It's a little cheaper. We can do that. So we parked in the parking garage and then he went and found the tents to go get, Things jammed up his nose in a parking lot, which sounds it. Well, I, I'm. It was just as unpleasant as it sounds. You know, I. He told me they did both nostrils, put fucking swabs all the way up to his goddamn brain to check it out, and they guaranteed him results in three to five hours. We get the car, and then we drive back another fifty-five minutes. So I'm now, I'm now, up, down, up, down. It took. It was four hours in the car. It was longer than the trips to San Diego. Uh and, and But at least I'm going home. You know what I mean? For him, it's just got to be this fucking death knell where you're like, oh, God damn it, one more night. And just because you get attuned to leaving, you figure you're going to go. I brought him back to my house. And, uh, and I'm like, hey, man, are you hungry? He's like, nope. Because we had eaten at a deli. That was where I got the Italian sub uh, at Mike's Deli on the way to the airport. And he's like, I'm full from a sandwich. I go, great. I go, well, as you know, I have all of the fucking leftovers in my fridge. If you want anything in there, fucking grab it, and that's fine. Uh, and then we hung out all night. We watched more wrestling stuff, did whatever, and he crashed. And then uh, I crashed. We got up in the morning, and, and, and oh, I should say he got, he got the results in five hours. They said he was negative. And those results are good for three days. So he's like, all right, well, I, you know, I booked my flight for tomorrow. I'm like, well, look, if it's three days, why don't you just stay till Saturday? And he's like, all right, no, I got to get the fuck out of here. So I said, all right. So he booked his flight and, uh, and Wednesday we did it all over again. Cause he literally booked the exact same flight in the afternoon. So I took him down there, dropped him off this time though. I did hang out down by the airport. There was a grocery store popped in there, hung out in my car. And then finally he texted me and he's like, hey, man, I got my tickets heading for the plane. Uh, we're good. And so I, I came back home and uh, it's not the same. You know, I mean, I, I've been alone for a very long time, certainly for a year and a half. I've been by myself here. And I look, I do I Zoom with people? Yes. Do I go to the store sometimes? Yes. But to uh, and I've started to go to lunch with my brother once a week sometimes and, uh, you know, went to Pat's and watched a movie, but it's not the same as three solid weeks of having a running buddy who you pick up in the morning, you hang out, you go have lunch, you fucking come over, you watch stuff, you laugh, you goof, you play games. Uh, Cause that's another thing. He would play Tekken and I'd watch. He played Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and I was watching him play. I mean, I, I love that. I used to do that with my brothers and they just, just watch somebody play a game. It's fucking relaxing. So, uh, my apartment seemed that much emptier. You know, and, and this has been my cocoon. This has been my defensive shell against the germ and the world and the changes and, and the idiots and every other goddamn thing going on. And uh, and it felt good to have somebody here. Now, look, did we spend a lot of time in my apartment? We did. But then we were out and about. We'd go eat. We'd go just, just to be out, running around, walking, doing anything. My, my watch, because <laughs> I've done nothing. I told you I've done nothing during the pandemic. And uh, we were walking around the concourse, wherever we'd go, my watch would all of a sudden start, it would like beep, beep, beep. And I would look down, it would be like, are you working out? Should we keep track of your outdoor workout? And I'm like, yes, my watch is so excited that I'm doing anything. It's like, yeah, okay, we can keep track of this. I'm like, cool, that's fine. So I let it, you know, and, uh, but just knowing that I was getting up, taking a shower, going to get my friend every single day was, was absolutely perfect. It was so great. It was it was even better than real life. You know what I mean? Cause real life is just me and I'm going out more or doing whatever. But this, this, this was with, you know, Ahmad's a huge part of my life has been for years now. And, and, uh, I'm lucky 
that that he's decided to remain friends and come visit and uh and and I miss him man I miss him already I missed him when I dropped him off and I mentioned that we ran around and we went to restaurants and we went to games and you know we went to San Diego we met his cousin Seven um you know shy kid college kid uh but just being introduced to, to his uh one of the members of his family was real cool and and I think I told you that he went to a dinner at uh his other cousin's house and the head of the Kuwaiti fucking foreign consulate whatever the fuck I don't know some dude was there a very important guy the highest ranking member of the Kuwaiti government who's not in the royal family he was at this dinner that was a couple of weeks ago so uh so then uh, they went out of town and then they came back and they said to Ahmad, hey, you know, we would love for you to come by again. And if you want to bring your friend, you can. And uh, I said to him, I mean, all right, well, I got to go wash the car. What do I need to do here? Because they're they live in a very nice place and they they are, you know, they're they're God, they're entertaining fucking diplomats for fuck's sake. Now I'm going to walk into their house. Hey, how you doing? You want to hear all about porn tube? <laughs> Hey, you you know what? I have two uh, laptops. One of them is for work. One of them, you're not going to believe this. By the way, do you guys have a dog door? Uh, So he's like, you want to go? And I said, of course. You know, and I I said, but I, you know, what do I do? Do I, I, you know, I feel like John Amos now in Coming to America. Do I bow? Do I curtsy? I I feel like breakdancing. I mean, I I don't know what to do with these people. He's like, you're going to be fine. Just just be, be you. So uh, and I had met his cousin and his cousin was very nice. Uh, the, you know, this is the the older cousin. I had met seven down in San Diego, but his, his cousin Christian uh, was a lovely kid, very impressive. And uh, and I think I told you I may have mentioned this if I didn't, though, he, he came to my apartment and we hung out for just like an hour talking after he drove him out here. And he said, you know what? He goes, uh, you are as advertised. Everything he said about you is true. And I was like, um, I, I hope that's a good thing. That's that's all I care about, you know. And um, so we turned around. We went to their place. And, uh, you know, I didn't know if they were going to have a fancy dinner. I, I didn't I didn't know. I didn't know anything. So uh, we got to their place, and, you know, gated community. We go, we pull in and we park. We go into their house and it is it is gorgeous. It is. It's like Dennis's house. It's gigantic ceilings and beautiful fixtures and. We walk in and they're like, hey, uh, we have pizza. And they had bought three pizzas from Papa John's and uh, three large pizzas. And look, it's only me, Ahmad, and his uh, two cousins and their mom. So it's five of us. They get three large pizzas. And uh, and it's Papa John's. And look, I'm not going to be, you know me, you know I'm not a Papa John's guy uh, for a very specific reason. I think the sauce tastes like bile. I'm not a fan of it, but they had a pizza that did not have any sauce on it. I'm like, Hmm, what is this? It looked like I'm guessing it was a Philly cheesesteak pizza of some sort. Cause it had green peppers and it had beef and it had cheese. And, uh, and so I grabbed a piece of that and, uh, and I ate that to be polite. You know, I, I was just like, all right. And you know, I, I, cause I didn't want to be a jag of, Oh, I hate Papa John's whatever. And sweep it on the floor like a f- fucking oaf. Uh, <laughs> but instead I, I accepted their generosity with grace and I had a piece of pizza and then I had a second piece of pizza and we sat down and we just talked. We, we talked about the, cause the kids are in college, you know, and, and then they kept talking about a mod, which is really funny cause they know a mod from when they were little. So they're like, uh, this is the most, we, you know, cause I'm talking to a mod and they're like, this is the most Ahmad has ever spoken with us. You don't even know. He's super quiet. Like, this is Ahmad. He just sits in his room and he waves at us. Like, he pulls his hand out of his pocket and waves and he plays his games or whatever he reads. Uh, So this is the most he's ever talked to us. And Ahmad was just like, all right, look, it's not like that. They're like, no, it truly is. (laughs) Um, But it was fun to get their perspective on him and and, uh, hearing about, like, the family dinners in Kuwait. And they would have these weekly gatherings. And and then we talked about, uh, you know, we talked about politics. We just, we talked about whatever. And I can only hope... Uh, that I, I made a good enough impression so they think that Ahmad's not wasting his time when he comes and visits his American friend. I don't I don't know. I think I did. You know, I was uh, smart and funny and erudite, and I, I got laughs, uh, you know, very careful with the language because, again, these are extremely nice, kind people, and they don't need me coming in and throwing fucks all over their living room. Uh, and I know how to act in polite company. It was just nice to meet them, and we we, 
we laughed, we joked, we had a great time. And uh, and then we're sitting there, and uh, the mom is like, uh, you know, she goes, you know, oh man, uh, she goes, I want, you know, I, I want sugarfish. Let's get sugarfish. Now there's still, you know, I had two pieces of pizza. That's it. Ahmad had one. I don't even think they ate the pizza. And then they just went, yeah, let's get some sushi from Sugarfish. What do you guys want? And I'm like, I don't, whatever. I, whatever you get is totally fine. And uh, they wound up ordering sushi boxes for all of us. Every single one of us got a sushi box. Me, uh, his two cousins, him, and uh, and then the the mom ate out of the cousins' boxes. But the each box had two sushi rolls and then eight pieces of sushi and then some sashimi and an amame. And, I mean, it was just... It was ludicrous. Like, I mean, this is 150 bucks worth of sushi, and they had already bought pizza. And then, you know, I offered to kick in, and of course, they're very nice. They're like, no, no, of course not, no. Um, and I just said, this is extremely nice. This is really nice. And, and Ahmad is like, but that's Kuwaitis, you know that. And he's right because when I was over there, everybody was kind and uh, offering help and trying to make. Everybody wanted to make sure that you were having the best possible time you could. And again, it, it, Ahmad carries that with him, and his family did as well. And uh, it was just an honor to be invited over to their place, you know, because I don't, uh, they, you know, uh, when you tell somebody, oh, man, I got a weird friend from the Internet. You should meet him. It seems like it's be a weird thing, but but it was great. And uh, it was an extremely fun time. It was a fantastic three weeks. And... Uh, you know, I'm very sorry I had to put my friend on a plane twice, but hopefully he can come back soon. He was talking about possibly Christmas, which would be fantastic. All depends on what he's got going on over there with work and family and every other thing. But um, my life is always better when Ahmad chooses to spend time with me, whether, we, whether we're in Japan, Kuwait, here in America, in Chicago, Los Angeles. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, he is my great friend. And and I miss him very much already. Love you, dude. Come back soon. You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can follow me at Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok at Mike40YOB. Yes, those exist. Have I been on them? I have not. But yet they exist. Mike40YOB at Instagram, Snapchat, and TikNot. TikNot? <laughs> I'm a TikNot. Check me out on TikNot. I'm really good. I'm very active on TikNot. I might not be on TikTok, but oh my God, my TikNot account is jam packed. Mike40YOB at uh, uh, Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok. Please check me out at those places and follow me and subscribe and do whatever you got to do at those places. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Ryan. Thank you to KC for all of their help. I, KC sent me a text. And now I have to send him a text. Look at me. I said I owed him an email. Now I owe him a text. I, I owe everybody everything. Um, you're all very kind, as I've mentioned, to indulge me. And and uh, we won't skip another week. We won't miss another week. I know words are cheap. Yes, talk is cheap. I get it. I know I, I, I'm I fighting and, uh, and I'll be fine. Next week, you'll... Trust me, next week's show you'll hear all about it. Oh goodness, won't you? Won't you? Don't you love those shows? When I wrote, I have a reboot and start to explain things to you. God knows that's what we need, right? Uh, all right. Well, next week's show will be very important. <laughs> no, it won't. Uh, hey, you know Dave Hernandez, uh, our good friend David. He is uh, on Facebook, Facebook dot com slash David Mex Hernandez. You can check him out. He's uh, he's getting it all done. The guy's a uh, he's all over the place. He's a master of the written word. He's a he's a king of the loot. He is a guy who uh, does a podcast. He does all of these amazing things. Well, first of all, it all starts you with you becoming his friend. Go to Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez and become his friend at Facebook right now. Right now, I say, go be his friend. And uh, and then when you're there, you can go ahead and peruse his page. Go look at his photos or his uh, and see all the artwork he's done. In the past, for memes he's created, artwork he's done for my fan club page, all sorts of things he's done in the past. Then you can see his future stuff by becoming his friend. He puts it all out. The man's prolific, if nothing else. And uh, you can join his closed group. Did you know he's got a closed group? What? Yes. The man has a closed group. It is called This Is Dumb, That's Dumb, You're Dumb, I'm Dumb. And it's uh, it's you and him and, and probably 180 of your closest friends making fun of the Internet. And going, ah, ha, 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 God isn't real. 
and uh, and seeing uh, photoshopped memes and cool ass stuff that David has done art wise. You should check it out. This is dumb. That's dumb. I'm dumb. You're dumb. Now you'll try to join. There'll be a question. Don't be a dick. Just answer the question and then you'll be in the group. And then you're one of the cool kids, one of the Facebook Internet cool kids. At Facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. You get in there, you check out his fucking closed group. You're like, this guy's the man, right? And then you think to yourself, well, wait a minute. If this guy's such a man, uh, let me check out his artwork. You go to the photos, you look at the artwork that he's done. You're like, holy Jesus Christ. I, I wonder if he can do any of that artwork like uh, for me. And I'm here to tell you that he can. Uh, and you want to know how to order it? Well, too bad. You've got to wait for this first. The man's got a podcast. What? Yes, that's right. Man has a podcast you can check out any any time of day. Go subscribe to it. Why wouldn't you do that? It's called The Flem Cat Podcast. That's four words. The, T-H-E, Flem, P-H-L-E-G-M, Cat, C-A-T, Podcast. You know, I, I spelled that, C-A-T. Did you see that? Uh, now, now, Thomas Hollywood Henderson didn't think I could. If he spotted me the C and an A, he didn't think I could. But I did right there. I showed him up. Uh, C-A-T. And then a podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, ding, 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 B-L-A-N-C-A, ding, 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 Cresta, ding, ding, Blanca, ding, ding, Cresta, Blanca, ding, 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 ding. Uh, So go right now, go to the uh, Apple podcast space, go to the iTunes score, store, score, go to Anchor, maybe, I don't know, go wherever you get your podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, Audible. Uh, I, I, what's the other one? What's that one? Pod Bean. Maybe it's on there. Anywhere you can find a podcast, you're going to find our great friend David. David Max Hernandez has the Flem Cat podcast. It's uh, it's chock full of uh, uh, singing guys. Who, there's a guy who looks like one of the banana splits, and he sings. There's a guy named Snagglefuck. Uh, I think Satan is on the show sometimes. There's uh, there's all sorts of different people and all sorts of different characters, all from the mind of Mexia. <laughs> Look at me having fun. Uh, our good friend David Max Hernandez does this podcast, the Flem Cat Podcast, available for you right now to go ahead and subscribe to. It's available in the iTunes Store. Check it out. Uh, write him a note there on Facebook. Tell him how much you love the goddamn show. He'll th- he'll be thrilled uh, that you're listening and that you like it. But and that's because you know, those are two important things. Well, fuck it. He just wants you to listen because if you just listen, you know you're going to fucking love the goddamn thing. You're not you're not going to get bamboozled into disliking it because it's fucking awesome. The Flumcat Podcast available now in the iTunes store. Go ahead and check it out. It's there waiting for it's right there waiting for you. No, it's bad. It's Richard Marks. And he is right there waiting for you. Am I singing that right? I don't know. Uh, I'll be right here waiting. All right, whatever. Max is right there waiting for you. So go ahead and check it out. The Flumcat Podcast. Listen to it. Write a review of it. Talk about how much you love it. That's the important thing. Make sure other people and get get other people involved. Spread the word. Let people know. Be Johnny Mexican seed and fucking throw Mex all over the goddamn place. That's what you want to do. Johnny Flemcat seed. Ugh, that sounds disgusting. But be it. Uh, don't dream it. Be it. Also, do you know he does artwork? Yes. I told you he does artwork for this show or he did artwork for this show for a long time. But he also does artwork for the closed group. He'll do artwork for you. What? Yeah. Your money. If your money is green, is your money green or gold? or silver, any of those colors will work. Um, well, don't send him a butter knife, but I mean, you know, you've got to send him real money or real silver, send him like an ingot. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, some doubloons, who knows? Send him whatever you got because he'll, uh, he'll do your Facebook caricature for you. He'll paint a, a picture of your dogs. He'll paint anything you want, whatever you need, man. You got a birthday coming up, an anniversary. He'll paint whoever you want him to paint. I've seen his work. It's outstanding. You can see it too for a price. Gold, silver, green, whatever you've got. Silver and gold, silver and gold. That's from Burl Ives. Uh, he would he was going to put green in there, but it just it was it, the syllables are very important. Silver, green, gold. So, no, see, it doesn't work. That doesn't work. Burl Ives was a smart man. Listen to him. Uh, but if you send those things to David, you can go ahead and get him to do the artwork for you. He'll do an oil painting. He'll do watercolors. Whatever the fuck you want him to do, the man can make it happen. And uh, but most importantly, here's the deal. You're going to have to go check out his website. You're not going to have to, but it just it. I like the cadence of it ending this bit because <laughs> you can see stuff on Facebook and you're fine. But why not check out the man's website? It's also worth looking at artbydmh.com. What's that address again? Well, it's artbydh. Uh, by, hold on. Artbydmh.com. A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H dot com. Cancer isn't free. 
and the challenges don't end when treatment is finished. For cancer survivors in their 20s and 30s, the stacks of medical bills, empty savings accounts, and time away from work can be catastrophic. No one should have to choose between seeing their doctor or keeping the lights on, or make the decision to skip their medication because they need to feed their families. Yet these are the choices that too many young adult cancer survivors make every day, and COVID-19 has added an extra layer of financial stress and uncertainty. The SAM Fund and Expect Miracles Foundation have provided over $2.5 million in grants to young adults across the country, but the need is greater than ever due to the pandemic. Please join us in supporting their efforts by making a donation to Expect Miracles Foundation's SAM Fund program today. To learn more or make a donation, visit thesamfund.org. That's thesamfund.org. Hey, it's me, Gene Bean Baxter. She is Allie McKay. We worked together for years on the Kevin and Bean Show on K Rock, and now we're doing this. We're doing this. You're in London. I'm here in LA. We do three shows a week on Patreon, and then one that we put out for the masses because we thought everyone should be able to enjoy our goodness. Allie, it's not. It's not that good. Tough but fair. Sponsors. Wait, uh, what's that? Uh, could you spell that for me? Sponsors. S P O N S O R S. By the way, if you uh, the, I turned the fan off, you may have heard that the fan is off now. There's no more uh, no more constant humming in the background. Uh, maybe the show is better with the constant humming in the background. Do you like that? It, with the, you know, there are cicadas out there. Are you getting used to the noise? Should I have that? Should I have like a high screech? I've never heard a cicada in my life. I don't know. I'm just could be a hum, could be a screech. Who knows? Could sound like the traveling Wilburys. I don't give a fuck. These are bugs on the East Coast that I don't care about. They live in the ground for 17 years. They climb out. They fuck somebody up. And then they go back into the ground. That's uh, that's far too Night of the Living Dead for me. No thank you, zombie bugs that murder. I, I can't. I couldn't possibly. I'm out. I leave them behind. It's bad enough we're starting to get fucking mosquitoes out here on the West Coast, which I got no interest in, but they're here. I got three bites on my legs. And because now every time, because we didn't have fucking mosquitoes. And now that I get a bite on me, I immediately think bed bugs because I'm a weirdo. I think I told you this last year when I was watching movies in Pat's backyard. Fucking terrible. Getting chewed up. See, this is why you never leave your house. I just talked about how fun it was. It was vibrant and alive and people and soccer and and little youths doing headers. And now I get three mosquito bites and I'm like, fuck it. Lock it down. Buy me some titanium shutters that I can operate with a switch. I don't even want to get up off the couch to turn anything off i want to press a button at all times i want to be a bond villain in my apartment let's let's do that let's keep out the sun better yet you know what let's buy the sun and turn it off i'll go mr burns straight up mr burns 
uh, sponsors. Did I mention that? I did. We have uh, the sponsors you just heard who were lovely enough to go ahead and sponsor us via the uh, co-op that I'll be telling you about in a couple of minutes here. But also we have a, a sponsor who was on board before these co-op motherfuckers. This is a sponsor who was on board before uh, the deck of cards that lights up so you can play it in the dark. Well, it was on on uh, board here before the the book you could read about how to buy me undies. I don't fucking know what we're selling these days, but I'm sure you're buying all of it, aren't you? You're making me look like a hitter. Well, this person thinks that I'm a hitter and has always thought that I'm a hitter. It's our great friend, Fearful Jesuit, who, uh, you know, the, look, the man, he, he is a sponsor and well-deserving of his plugs. And so then the show is coming out later and later and he's texting me and he's like, what's going on, man? Uh, under the guise of seeing if I'm okay, but you and I both know he just wants to hear all about his fantastic show on my show. Uh, he's just like, I, and he's very encouraging. He's like, you got this, man. I, I don't know what's going on over there, but maybe you should go to a biweekly schedule. And I'm not going to do that. And he's very nice to suggest these things. Uh, but again, like I said, he's reaching out in a way where he's he's making it look like he's concerned about me. But in reality, he's like, tick tock, motherfucker. I paid for an ad and I can't let the man down. So here I am to tell you about the Paranoid Strain podcast. Uh, just what I'm kidding. Please don't text me and say I'm a jerk. I mean, maybe I'm a jerk. That's fine. But you don't have to tell me, you know, I'm kidding, right? Everybody knows I'm kidding. These people know I'm kidding. I, I look, I misrepresent uh, Jesuit because I'm having fun. He is not mean to me. He writes me these very nice texts that are lovely. He's nice to check up on me. Um, cause again, you never know. You never know when I'm going to find a rope and a beam strong enough, right? That's, that's the kind, that's what I've led you all to think. Uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't be farther from the truth, but our friend fearful Jesuit is up at the Jesuit compound in the Bay area. And, uh, you know, he's out there putting out the paranoid strain podcast, ladies and gentlemen, the paranoid strain podcast is available right now in the iTunes store. You can check it out. You can leave a review for it. You can listen to it. You can download, look, download all the past episodes because they're ready for you to listen to. You're going to love them. They're going to fill your ears with clatter and nonsense. Uh, but also the dulcet tones of our friend Fearful Jesuit and the uh, low-key sexy tones of our great friend Dana Unicorn. Uh, and the Paranoid Strain episode that's out now, look, man, he's in the middle of this run on secret societies. I'm going to yawn. <sighs> Please don't take that as an indicator of my description of the secret society shows because he is right now on episode number six, ladies and gentlemen. Paranoid Strain, a secret societies episode number six. As always, Part of a multi-episode arc, episode, a multi-episode arc. Please go back and listen to all of them. Don't just jump in blind. You don't want to hear about the Cathars without first hearing about the other fucking idiots we've been talking about. Yeah, yeah. What, what's wrong with you? What do you think you're doing? You can just go in there and fucking listen to the Cathars and not know all about the Templars. If you don't, look, if you don't, if you don't want me at my Templars, you don't deserve me at my Cathars. That's what I'll say to you right goddamn now. Uh, the Paranoid Strain podcast available in the iTunes store right now and wherever you're going to find podcasts, I think Spotify, all of the great places. Um, Secret Society's episode number six. Uh, this was a learning experience for me. I learned a lot of things. Uh, here's what I learned. I learned that Hillian Jillian is a number. Uh, I, I didn't think it was. I didn't know anything about that. But And that's not, it's not even one of those old timey conspiracy numbers. This just came rolling off the tongue. Hillian Jillian. And I didn't realize that that was some sort of a method of counting, but it's in there. Uh, I also learned that popes are devious, which let's be honest. We all knew popes were devious, but then I start, I hear about these fucking popes and the bullshit they pulled back in like the fucking 1500s. Get the fuck out of here. Big hat. Nobody wants to hear your bullshit. And yet, and yet still to this day, there's a pope who like, now you got a friendly pope. Now is this the, it wasn't all right. Now I'm going to say this and it's controversial and whatever. Was it Ratzenberger who wore like red velvet shoes? And was he a gay dude? I know he's not really gay because he can't because he's the Pope and he's married to God. But at the same time, uh, isn't one of the popes. I think it's Ratzenberger. He wore his finery a bit too finely. Am I correct? He had like fancy shoes and he wore only the finest silks. And didn't he have like some uh, swole shirtless bodyguards? <laughs> I might be projecting that last part. It was something like that, right? Wasn't Pope Ratzenberger a closet case? I think he was, if I remember correctly. And and look, you can get into the Catholic Church and whether what they all do, I, I don't know. I don't want to go ahead and speculate. That's not what I'm here for. But if I remember correctly, Pope Ratzenberger was a uh, a Jimmy Choo wearing motherfucker. 
And he liked the he liked the dudes, and he had fucking bodyguards were all buff and like young priests. I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, but either way, go find the guy and look at him. He he looked creepy no matter what he was doing. I don't care who he was banging or not banging or who he loved or who he was crushing on. You saw if you saw look, go look at Pope Ratzenberger right now. If you saw that face coming at you wearing Jimmy Choo's, you'd be like, "What the fuck is happening?" He looks like a Cenobite. All right. Uh, <laughs> so popes are devious. I learned that from the show. Uh, I also learned about snake cults. Uh, look, and let me tell you something. It is never a wrong move to play Union of the Snake by Duran Duran, right? Never, never. Uh, that might show up. I've learned about the problem of evil. And I got to tell you this. They, they talk a, a bit more about your, uh, you know, there's the Cathars, certainly, but then the Templars. And I think I told you last time, man, the Templars, these dudes, like they were ass kissing. They were, and, and I'm not like uh, sucking up to somebody to try to get a promotion. I mean, they were to become one of them. You had to go into a room and there were secret societies and they talked about guys basically Frenching the anus. There were guys who were like tongue deep in dudes. And that was the way you became one of the fucking Templars. And look, I guess that's a small price to pay if you want to have access to the largest bank in Europe, whatever the fuck, uh, before the Pope or King Ralph or whoever the fuck took it apart. Uh, but still, though, uh, and look, I am I an ass eater? Certainly I am. I won't back away from that. That's a statement. I will plant my flag and tell you, yes, that is something I do have done and enjoy. Um, but I, but not a dude, not a dude ass. Now, again, I'm not kink shaming. If this is what you like, if you would prefer your stepfather to get caught in a dog door, good for you. If you would, if you would prefer your uncle to get trapped in a window, that's totally fine. If you are wishing that your high school science teacher would somehow be trapped under a picnic table and you would have access to his hindquarters, then please, by all means, rampage all of those men. I kink shame nobody. Enjoy your time. Now, I will tell you, I still think you need consent from uncle and stepfather, as well as high school science teacher. You, you can pretend that you don't need it from one of them, but I think all three of them need to consent. But, or, you know what? Maybe if you work your uh, your tongue and magic on their back doors, then they'll be like, oh, uh, well, I never. And they'll go crazy. Who knows? Uh, I still think, though, you need consent if you're going to eat the ass of your high school science teacher <laughs> when he's trapped under a picnic table. Call me old-fashioned. But if you, sir, intend on eating the ass of your high school science teacher once he's trapped under a picnic table, I still think you need to ask him if he's okay with it. That's all I'll say. I, I, that's a hill I'll die on. Uh, <laughs> so these dudes are, uh, you know, kissing ass and, and French kissing the anus and whatever the fuck to go ahead and get into the Templars. Letting me know exactly why these societies are so goddamn secret, because if they weren't secret, they'd be telling everybody, hey, man, we're ass eaters from way back. And there's again, there's no shame in ass eating. But back then, I think there was. I think I think uh, uh, the early Ratzenberger, although he might be into it, maybe Ratzenberger's an ass eater from way back. I don't know. And look, there now people are mad at me about the Pope, whatever. I good for you. <laughs> he's infallible. Yes, I know. He's got a tunic and a fucking hat. But where were all of you the last four years when fucking fuckneck in the White House was like, fuck the Pope. He's a jag off. And then everybody's like, yeah, the Pope's a jerk. I remember when the Pope was like a guy you couldn't mess with. And now this guy's fucking coming to town and shitting in the Pope's giant hat. And everybody's cheering him on. What the fuck did that guy do? What kind of what did he put in the water? to fool people and, and let them think that he was anything worth following or caring about. He was such a fucking stroke, right? Wasn't he terrible? And yet there are these people who just fall all over themselves still to this day fucking. And I'm not even talking just like people. I'm talking senators and shit. Senators and all those people are still kissing this idiot's ass. And he's wandering around his fucking club, popping into weddings and memorial things to tell people, oh, yeah, you know what? I was the president once. And they're like, yeah, we remember. We saw the fucking news, idiot. What the fuck? But there's a reason these people book over there is because they want to see him. They want to touch him. They like him. I don't even get it. What a world. Everything fell apart. God damn it. I don't know. Where are we? Remember the heroes that we used to have in this country? I don't. <laughs> They've all fallen. Um... So again, these dudes are all like ass eating and whatever. Good for them. That's fine. But then uh, I, I didn't. But now in this fucking episode, there's more of it. Like I, these fucking Templars, man, they're just uh, they were absolutely obsessed with putting their mouth on things and good for them. I'm all mouth, too. I understand that. I've got an oral fixation that won't fucking quit. What do you got? I'll put it in my mouth. But these guys, 
in, in order to get, because also here's the thing. They all loved eating ass and they all loved fucking, you know, blowing guys, whatever they loved, but they always couched it under, but this is a secret ritual to get into the Templars. If you'd like to be one of us and wear the chain mail and, and, and look at the giant bank accounts, well, then you certainly need to put somebody's penis in your mouth. What? Excuse me. I missed that. Yes, yes. It's just a formality, but if you'd like to be a Templar, please put a penis in your mouth. I, well, who's? Well, anyone's quite frankly whomever happens by here in this dark cave oh why it's only you and me well i guess you may as well put my penis in your mouth i mean i know that seems a little on the nose but uh if it's only you and i and you do want to be in the templars don't you oh yes very much so all right well then open wide sir because it looks like my penis will be finding safe haven inside of your soon-to-be templar spouting rhetoric mouth uh, thank you. That's my one act play, the Templar who, who inducted a boy. <laughs> uh, but in this one, they're kissing feet. Now, look, and again, as I've mentioned many times before, uh, lady feet. Yes, I love lady feet in shoes. I love lady feet uh, on couches and certainly on my shoulders. I love all of those things. But men feet. No, nah, man, men just wear fucking socks or shoes. I don't give a fuck if you're a Templar or a Cather. Or a, or a temple, if you're Shirley Temple. You know, Shirley Temple actually can take her shoes off. She's a, she's a grown woman who can go ahead and fucking unveil them. But men, fucking wrap them up. Mummy those feet up, goddammit. I don't give a fuck if it's a dish towel or a series of oily rags. I don't want to see your toes ever, you fucking idiots. And, uh, and, and not even if you want me to try to get into a religion. I, I don't care fucking how big your bank is if I got to kiss your feet. And I'm sure, because look, here's the deal. If these dudes are like, hey, man, you know what? You want to be in the Templars? You're like, of course. They're like, well, you know what? You got to kiss our feet. And you're like, I don't, I'm sorry. You're like, yeah, man, you got to climb down on all fours and you go to go and kiss all of our feet. There's five of us. So that's 10 feet. You got to put a smoocheroo on. And the dude's like, uh, all right. I mean, I guess I could make that work, but here's the deal. And we both know this. This is not a secret. You know, this is true. They, uh, they're not going to stop at the feet, these guys, because they, you know what? They it's like the Churchill thing. It's like, young lady, we've already established what you are. Now we're haggling on price. The whore fucking line. Right. So if you're willing to get on all fours and kiss fucking 10 strange feet of dudes just to be in the Templars, they are not finished with you. You're going to go and kiss all 10 feet and they're going to go, oh, well, that was an excellent beginning to your Templar initiation. And you're going to go, wait a second, what are you talking about? And they're going to go, yes, well, that was the beginning. Uh, and you have to prove yourself by kissing the feet. And now you really have to prove yourself. We're going to bend over, get ready for anus licking. And then you're like, what? And it's like, yeah, that's the that's the prize. 10 feet, five anuses, probably five cocks. These guys aren't going to, you're going to have a long night with these Templars. And for what? What, the the the, the fancy crest on your patch, your, your shirt? I guess it's like a frat. You know, you can just like, hey man, I'm Delta Chi Delta. Everybody's like, ooh, that's great. You blew a guy named Rick. And you can uh, have a, the, Rick can get you a job and now at a fun place, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't in a frat. Uh, but these guys, a lot of feet kissing in this episode and not really, I mean, there's, they, they, they mention it, but just there, you know what? There's a lot of feet kissing in the Templars and I'm, I gotta say, I am not here for it in the parlance of the young people of today. I, and people are like, I am here for it. I am not here for it. I am not here for any sort of feet kissing or, or uh fratage because you know there's going to be fratage next thing you know the fucking templars because you know none of these guys are circumcised so they're gonna go you know what man let's do some docking and you're like what's that they're like let's go man grab your foreskin we've got some docking to do and then they're gonna do some sounding and all of these other terrible things that i know about because i've been on the internet far too long in my life uh but you wanted the docking of the templars boy that's if that's not a gay porn i don't know what is uh, the die, the sounding of the Templars. There you go. <laughs> go ahead and throw that up at the fucking Bijou. All right. Uh, so there's feet kissing galore in this episode of the paranoid strain, not galore, but there's some mention of it. Uh, you'll learn about the good men also known as AKA the Cathars. Uh, you'll hear the word omni benevolent, which I was not expecting and I'm enjoying and I'm, I'm, it's now part of my lexicon. Uh, it's no Hillian Jillian, but it's, it's the best we got at this point. Uh, we get open mic unicorn, which I was not expecting at all. Uh, and I, you know what? Not only that, we get a surprising NBA broadside that I did not see coming because I didn't expect, uh, 
uh, Fearful Jesuit or Danny Unicorn to be NBA knowledgeable, NBA fans, any of those sorts of things. So this surprising NBA broadside out of nowhere really throws me, but not as much as Open Mic Unicorn. Uh, and, and I believe she, she implores you to try the veal, which seems strange. She's from a country that they don't have veal. I don't think they have baby cows in Danny Unicorn's country. Uh, you'll hear about the boga mills, uh, no meat, no milk. And, and you'll hear the phrase penniless barefoot proselytizer. All of these things and more in this week's paranoid strain, secret societies, number six, uh, remember that popes are devious. Remember that unicorns on the open mic, boga mills, barefoot proselytizer. It's all there. God damn it. Download it a hillion jillion times. It's available for you right now. And uh, eventually number seven will come out. Won't that be grand? I think it will. Our good friend, Paranoid Strain host, Fearful Jesuit, is available at this email address, theparanoidstrain at gmail.com, theparanoidstrain at gmail.com. You can write them on there and grab them and tell them how much you love the show and you love him and you love me and you love everything about it. Leave a review in the iTunes store. Uh, download all of them, listen, subscribe, follow the goddamn thing. He's, uh, he's well worth it. And I appreciate him consistently being associated with this show. Uh, even in the face of my current predicament of not being able to climb out of a hole that I've dug for myself over the past year and a half. Yay. And by year and a half, I mean the past five years. All right. Uh, paranoid strain, go ahead and download it now. Why not? You're already downloading Mex's podcast. While you're there, browse around and look for the my man, Paranoid Strain Fearful Jesuit. He's there. Want to hire me to do a cameo? Of course you do. Why wouldn't you want some of this talking done directly in your face? Like normally I'm doing it on a microphone. You're like, oh, we get this whenever. But if you hire me on a cameo, boom, it's right there. Yeah, there's no, I can't duck the cameo. I get paid for those, man. So uh, you want to make me 15 bucks and give five to the cameo folks? I think you do, man. Uh, so go ahead and hire me. It's cameo. It's bookcameo.com. You download it on your, uh, on your phone as well. The cameo app, go ahead and sign me up or sign yourself up, sign us all up. It's what is it? Father's day coming up. How awkward are your conversations with your dad? Are they bad? Are they good? I don't know. Maybe you get along great with your dad. Maybe it's always a bit of an arm's length deal. Well, here's the thing. I'm here to break the ice. Just hand me a goddamn pickaxe and I will go at your dad's ice on father's day and break through to this old man. Tell him he should love his kids and hug them every once in a while. Put down the basketball great Santini and tell somebody they're great. <laughs> tell somebody you love them. Tell somebody you fucking love them. God damn it. It's Father's Day. And you can tell him you love them, too. Don't don't think I'm just fucking chewing him out. But it's a cameo, man. I can say what I want. Actually, I can say whatever you tell me to say. And then I can vamp and add a few things here and there. Uh, will I do that? Probably not. I'm not giving you any bonus cameo. Of course I am. I'm talking fucking forever. I'm an idiot. Uh, I don't understand the value of a dollar uh, or the value of my time. So you, you book me for 15 bucks. I went up talking for 15 minutes. And I'm like, I just made a dollar a minute, which I guess 60 bucks an hour is a good price. Except I'm not giving you an hour. I'm giving you 15 minutes. So I'm giving 15 bucks, which is fine. Um, but if you paid me 15 bucks, I could do a five minute chat. Why wouldn't I do that? I got to scale it down. These things are out of control. You know what I said to Ahmad when he was here? I'm like, look, I got to ask you a question. You got to answer me honestly. He's like, yeah. And I go, is the show too long? He goes, dude, the show's not long enough. I said, no, you don't have to fucking. And he goes, no, I'm serious. I go, well, sometimes I just feel, you know, like, I, like people aren't responding or it's just, uh, you know, I think I say some fucking hilarious stuff and I don't hear back. He goes, you do say hilarious stuff. He goes, but that's just it. You just got to keep saying hilarious stuff. And it's just, that just sounds bleak. <laughs> but I'm okay with it. I'm all right with it. So, uh, so I will do that on cameo as well. I will say hilarious stuff for however long I need to say it. Uh, if you want the cameos to be longer, well, that's probably not going to happen, but still I will be there lurking. I will tell your dad great things about you and your kids. And uh, I'll even tell him your kids names because he's probably forgotten them at this point because your dad has sailed off on a goddamn cutty Sark ship full of beer and you'll never see him again. <sighs> Book me for Cameo, cameo or it's bookcameo.com, or get the app on your phone, and I'll tell your family you love them, I'll tell your enemies you hate them, or vice fucking versa, whatever you want to do. It's 15 bucks. I'm your puppet, goddammit. Pay me 15 bucks and shove a fist up my ass and make me say whatever you want me to say. Happy to do it. You know, I'm in the Misfit Toys co-op. Did you know this? Of course you did. Uh, it's, it's, it's other shows, like Let Me Watch Your Movie With You by Jonah Ray. No Fun with Jen Kirkman. Todd Glass has a show called The Todd Glass Show. Surprisingly enough, I didn't see that coming. Never Not Funny with our great friends Jimmy Pardo and Matt Belknap. And of course, Doug Loves Movies with Doug Benson. All of these shows are part of the Misfit Toys Co-op. All of these shows are out there for you to download and listen to and keep 
close to your heart, close to the vest. And uh, and listen to them today. Let me watch your movie with you by Jonah Ray. Never not funny. Doug loves movies. The Todd Glass Show and no fun with Jen Kirkman. The uh, Misfit Toys Co-op. All of these shows banding together, linking arms and playing podcast Red Rover and saying Karen Kilgariff come over. And will she? Probably not. She can't handle our title. Uh, you know, you can become a patron of this show at patreon.com slash Mike four zero Y O B. I'm sure you're thinking to yourself the fucking gall of you, the fucking nerve of you to try to get patrons when you've put out the show a week late. Uh, yeah, you're right. I skipped a week and, and I don't, uh, I'm not happy about it, but we, we did what we could. It won't happen again. Get off my dick and, and don't try to chase anybody off my Patreon. Patreon's a good thing. I get, you know, I'll tell you what, everybody's got a Patreon now. There'll be some fucking whistlehead on Twitter. And he's just like, Hey man, I'm making jokes. And I'm looking, that guy's making 600 bucks a month. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I mean, everybody's out there doing this fucking thing. And that's good. I guess all of us are electronic hobos. I got no reason I shouldn't be, uh, but I'd love for you to join me and put money in my cup. Will you put money in my cup? I hope you will. Patreon.com slash Mike four zero Y O B patreon.com slash Mike four zero Y O B. Uh, go ahead and become a patron of this show. It makes me happy. I put up a standalone sting last week. It was a, a chunk of audio. And you know what? I have another chunk of audio to upload from one of the many failed attempts at doing this show this week. Uh, happy to put it up and we'll see if you like it. And, uh, and pe- like I said, people are like, I don't even know why you cut that out of the show. And it's like, I, cause I'm insane. I don't know. So I'll put up this other chunk on, on the uh, Patreon. And if you get a chance to listen to it, maybe you'll like it and maybe you won't. Who knows? patreon.com slash mike four zero y o b please go ahead and become a patron it helps me out immeasurably especially with the world getting back to normal and me trying to figure out exactly how i'm going to stay afloat and or alive i can't do this show from a homeless camp so please keep me with a roof over my head join the patreon patreon.com slash mike four zero y o b and uh and that would be great I'm hearing noises outside. All right, we got to hustle through this because I'll, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy, youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy. Uh, as I've mentioned, there are YouTube videos uh, coming in the, in soon we'll be uploading the streams and stuff, but also maybe I'll be doing some chats over there. Who knows, man, got to utilize my own television network. That's youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy. If you haven't followed or subscribed, you should follow or subscribe. Why not? It's just there waiting for you. And also I'm at twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy, twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. Uh, you can find me on there and I am, uh, I am streaming five days a week, ladies and gentlemen, every Monday through Friday, we usually take Saturday and Sunday off. Although I will tell you this, uh, with a mods help, we are now, uh, we're going to have one retro day a week. I played burger time and frogger this week. It was fucking fun as hell. Uh, we'll be doing one retro day a week. I found this game called marbles so I can stream steam games. That's kind of fun. Everybody gets to pick a marble. Whoever wins wins. It's totally cool. We got to figure out some prizes for that. I would imagine, uh, marbles was fun. The retro games are fun. And, uh, and and with steam opened up to us, there's a whole new world of games that we can go ahead and explore and start streaming. But I will tell you this with the raspberry Pi up and running, uh, and me learning that I can save the data on some of these games, ladies and gentlemen, um, let me know if you'd be interested in this because it's an idea I have. I don't know if you would be, um, but part of me wants to do like a fucking late night Genghis Khan stream a Nintendo's Genghis Khan, a game I've told you about, uh, that I love and it would be incredibly fun to do a late night stream. Although the thing is it is, believe me, it is a visually boring game. It is not, it would just be me talking to the stream while also playing Genghis. If that's something you think you might be interested in, let me know. That'd be cool. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's not like if you say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm probably going to do it. It's just a matter of when I just got to figure out exactly when I can go ahead. And cause like, I think late night is fun. You know, you get a fucking pizza and you stay up and you're playing games all night and people hang out in the stream. It's like a sleepover. It's like a goddamn sleepover. We're having, you see what I mean? Camaraderie. That's what I want. And, but also I don't have to leave my house <laughs> camaraderie from within my four walls. That's perfect. I reach out and touch someone on the stream and I play some Genghis and I have some pizza and you guys watch me eat pizza. Don't you want to watch me eat pizza? Oh, that should be on Pornhub. One of those, man. Oh man. I got stuck in the dog door with a pizza. <laughs> I fucking ate it. It was, I ate it slowly and sensuously forget eating somebody's at sensually. Uh, no sensuously. Yeah. Cause, uh, uh, vegetables are sensual. People are sensuous, right? Yeah. Okay. I think it was Jesus. I forget what Mrs. Warmer taught us. All right. 
Twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy, man. I'm there doing streams all the time, and I hope you will check me out. At least go follow and subscribe to the channel, and then you'll always know when I'm on there playing. It's fun, and now i got to get out of here, dudes. i got to, because I can already hear them ramping up outside. Dude, they're fixing my building, and this is scaring the fuck out of me, because uh, whenever they start doing important, like real, real improvements to the building, I start to think they're sprucing it up to sell it. Now, they're also, they might not be because uh, directly across the street from my building, there's a new building being built. It's been being built for over a year now. They even worked some during the pandemic, but, uh, but now they've dug out the parking garage and you can start to see the building start. So it's going to be a brand new complex directly across the street. And I know the owners here are like, fuck, we got to spruce our shit up or else nobody's going to want to live here. They're all going to live across the street. But at the same fucking time, I told you that the people who own this building are dead. So their daughter owns it now, and maybe she wants to spruce it up so she can sell the goddamn thing, in which case my rent's going to get jacked up or I'm going to get kicked out or some other bullshit's going to happen. And again, I just said, like I said, you want to keep a roof over my head? Go to patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. Um, but the improvements they're doing now, we got a warning. They were like, hey, man, we might. Uh, did I tell you about this? I don't know if I did. I might have told you about this. I don't think I did. Did I? Christ, I hope I didn't. If I did, then you know what? Fuck. It's been so long since I did a goddamn show. I can't even remember what I talked about to you people. And so this is, and you know what? This is my comeuppance. This is exactly what I get. I I shouldn't be uh, surprised if you guys are just like, what the fuck, man? You told us about this already. And I'll be like, what? How how dare I do that? Uh, It doesn't seem like I told you about this. Either way, they're doing power washing of my building. There was a note in my door. And it said they were doing power washing and painting of the building and to keep my windows and blinds closed so as to not get debris and or prying eyes into my house. And uh, and that makes sense, right? Of course it does. So last week I was taking a shower and I had the window open and a guy walked right past my window and I was like, hey, I forgot about that good stuff with the guys. But here's why I forgot about it. These fucking dudes like, I don't know what they're doing. OK, they they, they were like telling us that they were going to do this power washing and then they were going to paint. And so I was like, all right, well, you know what? I'm going to sleep in my bedroom because I've been sleeping in the living room uh, with the windows open. I like it, but I have to close all the windows because of the debris. And I'm like, well, I'll sleep in the bedroom so there won't be any noise to wake me up. Dudes, eight fucking a.m. A jet engine is going outside my window. It was so bad. It was one of those things where you're dreaming it and you think that that you're dreaming this thing is happening. And it was like a helicopter was in my dream and then a fucking dream, a jet engine. And then I woke up and it turns out it's really happening outside of my building. So that's the power wash, I suppose. I don't know, but I taped it. I, I will put a video up. Remind me if I forget, I'll put a video up on the Westside 86 jokers page and you will, you will fucking hear it. It was so goddamn. I couldn't believe how loud it was eight o'clock in the morning. And they, so that was that, but that, it only made that noise for like a day and a half, two days. They didn't power wash the whole fucking building. And so now they're going to paint. So now they had on the, on the outside, they had like two things of blue, one thing of sea foam, another thing of two things of white. And I don't know what color they're going, but they should have gone with fucking sea foam because sea foam's attractive. But instead it looks like they're going to paint the building white. I haven't seen anybody paint a goddamn thing. Cause here's another thing. My building, you know, they don't hire a crew. There, there's two dudes here. There's a guy, you know, Ramon and Jose are outside eating sandwiches and thinking about what they're going to do. There's no paint on the building. It's been over two weeks, week and a half that they've been doing this, and there's no paint. There's just, it's fucking insane, man. So I don't know, man. I just think to myself that, you know what, any moment now they're going to go ahead and pull up that power washer, and I should probably talk until they do it because they can hear it, but no, I'm going to put that video instead. Is anything I like more than me? It's people who like me. I love me, but if you love me, I love you. Cause you know why we both love me. How great am I? Let's talk about that for a while. And by a while, I mean forever.
Palito Podcast. Podcast. Dream Bank knows that dreams take hustle and hard work, and they thrive with connection and support. Visit AmFam.com slash Dream Bank to join our community and explore our free events and resources designed for dreamers like you who do believe and achieve.